So there are some polls open in uh, the chat box and you can use it. The chat box is open for you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming in. We're going to start it in five minutes. I request you all to sit down. In five minutes, we're going to start. Thank you. No, that's fine. Don't record. Okay. So we have pretty good crowd. Last benches. Come, come, friend, come, friend. Okay. You can fill few spaces. But first thing, can you guys see the screens? Do you want to uh, turn the lights off? Yes. Can we dim this out? 
yes, these things. And uh, how many of you stay nearby? Maleshwaram, Rajajinagar. No one stays nearby? Okay, how many of you stay nearby BTM? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Jainagar, BTM, all central, yeah, south. Whitefield? The rest, where are you guys staying? Tell me. Did you guys travel from Tumkur or like North India? Kengeri, yeah. Okay, Mysore guy. <laughs> Manyata, who is from Manyata? Oh, okay. So now don't tell me all are from the same company. Which company, guys? Oh, all same chorus also. Nice. Good partners, huh? Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Awesome. So, I see these guys like super silent. <laughs> I know them, but yeah. Company guys. Oh, just changed, yeah. I like, yeah. Old is gold. <laughs> Which company? Huh? NDT. Opportunities, you are in the right place. Good. Take him. Okay. Atos, Infi, and how many years of experience, guys? Eight? Six? Nice. Sir? Yes? Cap Gemini, years of experience? Twelve? Nice. Art levels. Good. Um, yeah, this is Grove, guys. Which company? Cloud, guys. Fine. I love this. Accentures? Cloud? Ecolab? Okay. Company, guys? No, I know you guys. Abstrail, right? Yeah. You guys had like, there are like five to six regular members who used to come, and now I don't know where are they. Entity. Philips. LTI. Okay. So part of Philips or like Wipro to Philips? Part of Philips. Yes. Yes. Oh, DBC. Yeah. Brillio. Ragvitech. Where is this? <coughs> cool Logate and uh, startup. Nice, nice, nice. Win for me. What do you guys do? No, that's it. Oh, God. I, you, uh, high five, man. Yeah. I like, yeah, but Salesforce partners are like services. S partners, huh? Okay, so fine. IBM? IBM family? Okay. SLK, Giri was your ex Salesforce head, practice head. Oh, you, you were part of that. New to this? Okay. IBM family. Pressure. How come you came? I mean, like, how come you know about this event? Which community? Okay, our group name? Now I'll rag you guys. Okay, now it is my time to rag. Okay. What is our group name? Who knows our group name? What the... F Oh no, <laughs> control. I have to beep it out, but yeah. Okay, what is our group name, guys? Yeah, fine. Thank God. I Now I got my I mean, like, breath, soul back. Okay. Malabs. Infi, guys. Nice, 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 nice. This side. Which Infotech? Clover Infotech. Where is this? Mumbai, you came from Mumbai, oh, okay, nice, but you're part of Mumbai or Bangalore only, work from home, lovely man, you're a lucky fellow, <laughs> okay, student, nice, how about this event, group, okay, Malabs, Malabs, LTI, Deloitte, okay, awesome, fine, <coughs> So, how many of you are like new to this ecosystem? I mean like CC, uh, Commerce Cloud ecosystem. How many of you are new? Okay. Hello. How many of you are like experienced in CC? 
Commerce Cloud, experienced. Okay, the one who is raising, are you part of cloud, guys? No, no. Uh, are you part of this company, Cloud Odyssey? Which company? G Square. Which? G Spare. Okay. Awesome, awesome. I know what. There is only one guy. Okay. Uh, 10 plus years of experience. I know two hands from, from front. Yeah. 10 plus years of experience. One is there, that's all. 5 to 10. Okay, 5 to 10. Almost 80% is 5 to 10. Uh, 0 to 3. Wow, pretty pretty good hands up, awesome. And uh, precious, I know only one and two, and three. Okay, looking for job? Are you, no, yeah, I'm not pitching. Oh God, I mean precious. These two guys are looking out for a job. Which company? Ecolab. Okay, fine, fine. How many years of experience? Six months. Awesome. How is Salesforce? Pretty good. Wow, you are in good place, man. Okay, awesome. Cool. So, do you guys like this place, World Trade Center? Wow. You guys came here just for that? Yes. Pretty honest, yes. Lovely. Awesome. So, how many of you are here to learn Commerce Cloud? How many of you are here to do shopping after 2 o'clock two or 1 o'clock? Nobody wants to do. Okay, how many of you are going pub after this? No timer. <laughs> Evening time. So what you will do from 2 to 5 or 2 to 6? Uh, rounds, huh? Nice, nice, nice. Uh, oh, okay. You guys are there. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. So I think we'll begin. Um, just give us like a two minutes or so. And then we'll start. Okay. So, okay. Are there a few more guys? Seven of them are like outside. We'll just fill them in very quickly. How many of you are new to this event? New to this event? Why is it every time I get new crowd and not old crowd? Okay. So the thing is, back in 2019, 
we used to get almost like 300 participants, 300 uh, 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 people over one event, okay. Now it is all back in track. All companies are opening up. How many of you guys are enjoying work from home? Enjoy? <laughs> Where were you guys all these days? Huh? Okay. Uh, anybody who is watching IPL? Obviously. Oh. Okay. Who favorite team? I should I should record this, guys. <laughs> okay. How many CSKs? Fine. Fine. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so May tenth. What is May tenth? Election. You guys are voting. I'm not asking whom. <laughs> I'll make sure I'll keep my mouth shut over here. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So, I think we'll start. Uh, uh, myself, Kishore. Uh, I've been in this ecosystem for like nine years of, uh, and like almost nine years with experience. And uh, leading Salesforce Bangalore since seven years, seven, seven and a half years. And uh, Bangalore Developer Group. Uh, with this, uh, I'm in Salesforce MVP, and uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, we conduct events um, every month, and all those events will be technical events purely, and uh, and yeah, those events will be latest. When I say latest, uh, it will be either a new cloud or new additions or new releases, something I sort of. Uh, so this this is some this is a kind of an example what I would like to set commerce cloud right so um, yeah this is new we have been we haven't done it any time in like almost seven years I know CC is not that old but still uh, brand new uh, introduction for community so that is why we planned to have this event um, somewhere uh, to all the uh, participants over here right. Uh, plus, there are a few who are joining online as well. Uh, <clears throat> so this event, I think, uh, uh, has been sponsored by Cloud ODC team. Uh, uh, kudos to you guys. Thanks for uh, being uh, uh, being supportive for community. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you guys have you guys have uh, done a great job in uh, organizing stuff with the venue plus other aspects, but. Uh, the one point what I would like to tell about uh, Cloud Odyssey is like they are partnered, um, uh, registered partnered guys with Salesforce that is Crest Partner. Plus, uh, uh, they do majority of the stuff in CC. So they know, they literally talk CC every day. So that is how it is, right? So uh, I would I would not waste time. I'll just start the session by handing over to uh, Cloud Odyssey team. Uh, we have Vasant who will talk about Cloud Odyssey, and uh, after that we will start our session from uh, Yogendra. Um, so he will be the person who is handling. Um, he's kind of an arc over here and uh, leading the CC practice, and then we will have a market leader uh, who will talk about Heda and uh, other clouds as well. Uh, with this, uh, uh, Vasant, over to you. And thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Some more energy, please. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, awesome. It's like, uh, anyway, Kishore introduced about that, uh, Salesforce Bangalore developer community. And in fact, uh, last, on April 8th, even I attended Bangalore community event by Sebastian Wagner. I met a couple of people over there. It was a fantastic event. Then we had this idea from long time. Now it's happened. So, so happy to see you all here. Now, uh, first of all, I have a question. How, as like, how many of you knew Cloud Odyssey? Earlier? Have you seen our uh, LinkedIn? <laughs> sure. How many of you like World Trade Center? Okay. <laughs> nice. As you already revealed your plans, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Now let me give a quick introduction about Cloud Odyssey. People, uh, Cloud Odyssey was established in 2014 in UK. 
by our founder and CEO, Mr. Suresh Goli. Now we are at India. In India, we do have spaces, office spaces at Bangalore. The headquarters is at World Trade Center. And then we are having a commerce business unit at Courtyard Marriott Hebel. And we do have a Salesforce core development wing at Hyderabad. And as said, we are Salesforce Crest partners and MuleSoft partners as well. Having some 200 plus certified professionals and 40 plus MuleSoft certified professionals here. Just I would like to quickly introduce our management team uh, who are also here with us to see the fantastic event. First of all, I would like to introduce you people, uh, our managing director of Cloud Odyssey, Mr. Govindram Chaudhary is here. Can you give them a big welcome? <laughs> And we do have our uh, Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Prashant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant. And uh, as I said, uh, we have a commerce business unit. And the business unit practice lead we have, Mr. Raj Shekhar is here. And the Salesforce core development wing, the practice lead, Mr. Raghu Prasad is here. And our CTO himself is a MuleSoft architect. So Prashant will take care of MuleSoft wing here. Thank you so much. And uh, coming to this, can I have, int uh, I'll quickly go to the agenda of our session today. And then we'll go to the Commerce Cloud session. Suraj. And uh, the people in online, both in YouTube and in Teams. Hi, everyone. So, so extremely happy for having you here. And I'm assuring you, you will have a fantastic time and fantastic learnings today. Thank you. So people, uh, hope is it visible, but still I'll read it out for you people. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we planned, we are having a welcoming guest till 11.15 the buffer time. Still we are okay. And then the welcome note of Cloud ODC, the Cloud ODC interaction. After that, uh, in a couple of minutes, we are going to have our Commerce Cloud session by our chief architect, Commerce Cloud architect. I'll slowly introduce him as well. And then uh, we have a quick coffee break. The coffee, it's already arranged over there. I'll give you the time, that a quick coffee break. After that, the session will continue. And then we have a lunch. We are providing lunch as well. The quick lunch break we do have. Not in the office one hour lunch break, but we'll quickly do it. OK. After that, we are having a session from an industry expert who is having 25 plus years of experience on new emerging Salesforce clouds, like the HEDA Education Cloud, and also on Health Cloud. After that, we do have the Sales Cloud ODC webinar calendar. See, people, this is the first event we started in, but we planned it for entire financial year 2023 to 24. So what we're going to do, everything, every month, we are planning a webinar that everything will release at that time. We are having a webinar release. That uh, webinars and meetups are also there in it. We can catch up even later as well. That information we will tell you at that time. After that, there is a small felicitation and there are surprise gifts for the people here as well. So people, be ready. We are having our, our nomination procedure for that. Our volunteers are there. They were totally guided. They will pick the people from it. Okay? And then we have a vote of thanks. After that, we are having some gifts for our people as well. You came so far for us, so we won't let you people with empty hands. We have some surprise gifts for you as well. Thank you, thank you so much. With that, I rec thank you. Yeah, you can clap for me, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. With that, uh, before going to the session, I request Zuveria to come onto the dais and give a brief introduction about our Commerce Cloud architect. Thank you, Vasan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to introduce you all to Mr. Yugandar Talpaneni, a highly skilled Salesforce uh, architect with over 11 years of experience on the Salesforce Commerce Cloud platform. Mr. Yugandar has completed his bachelor's in computer science and engineering from JNTU AP. Mr. Talpaneni has also participated in DND phase discussions, created technical specification documents, and trained both freshers and experienced resources on the latest SFCC features, ensuring efficient delivery of projects. He has worked on 20 plus implementations, 30 plus analysis and estimations, and trained over 300 plus resources. With Mr. Talpanini's guidance, 
multiple development teams have successfully implemented e-commerce websites using SFCC for several popular brands including Hallmark, Dallas Cowboys, Party City, Christopher and Banks, Anastasia Beverly Hills, etc. He has a rich experience in the implementation of e-commerce projects based on SFCC reference applications such as SiteGenesis 1, SiteGenesis 2, controllers, and latest SFRA. His vast knowledge and expertise in SFCC will undoubtedly be of great value to both the organization and for today's session as well. His achievements include the Best Performer Award for the year 2013, Most Valued Player Award for the year 2015, and the Leo Award for the year 2015 as well. Without any further ado, I request you all to help me uh, in welcoming Mr. Ugandar Talpaneni. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Juveria. So uh, let us get started with Salesforce Commerce Cloud session for the day. Uh, I see uh, in the uh, poll, most of you are new to, or at least many of you are new to the Salesforce ecosystem, or the Salesforce Commerce Cloud for that matter, right? So let us get started. Uh, I'm sure uh, the today's session will give you an overall understanding on what is Salesforce Commerce Cloud and where to use it and how to use it, right? Okay, so now, what is SFCC? So the SFCC stands for the Salesforce Commerce Cloud and it is a SaaS-based software as a service-based e-commerce framework and we use this framework for building the B2C e-commerce websites. I'm sure some of you are new to some of the terminologies that are mentioned here, maybe SaaS, e-commerce, right, may not be e-commerce, right, because nowadays e-commerce is part of our life, especially after COVID, right, and the B2C, what is B2C, right, and the storefront. So we will see what is e-commerce and what is B2C commerce in the upcoming slides, but for now, let us talk about SaaS. So software as a service, right? So what it means is that to build an e-commerce website, we definitely need some software, the web servers, the application servers, the database servers, maybe the file system, the networking, things of that nature, right? As a developer or as a merchant, we do not need to have any of the softwares installed in our laptops or in our server, right? So a Salesforce will take care of hosting all those softwares and we can interact with those softwares over the internet, right? So without, uh, you know, uh, focusing much on uh, how to maintain those servers, the downtimes, uptimes, right, the interruptions, things of that nature, we do not need to worry about all that because everything is hosted by Salesforce and maintained by Salesforce and we can peacefully uh, focus on the innovation than maintaining the servers, right? So that is SaaS, software as a service. And the storefront, so don't get confused with the word storefront, right? The storefront and a website, both are same. We use the word storefront and a website interchangeably, so both are same. We'll talk about what is B2C and what is e-commerce in the upcoming slides. Next slide. So now, how many of you heard this word demandware? One? Okay, so very few, right? Okay, so let us talk about what is demandware. Later I will talk about why I am talking about demandware now, right? So now, demandware, uh, it is a SaaS based e-commerce framework again, and it was founded in 2004, and later it was acquired by Salesforce in 2016, and renamed it as Salesforce Commerce Cloud, 
right? Especially the people who started working in Salesforce Commerce Cloud before 2016. Sometimes they use the word demandware still, right? Because they are used to it. But don't get confused. Both are same. The Salesforce Commerce Cloud and demandware both are same, right? And demandware was acquired by Salesforce and renamed it as Salesforce Commerce Cloud. The reason why I'm talking about the history of the platform is because of two reasons. One is, uh, if you look at this, the demand, the demand where the Salesforce Commerce Cloud is not built on the core platform, SFDC, right? It is not built on the core platform. And the demand where piece came into the Salesforce ecosystem through the acquisition, right? Number one. And number two, since it is through the acquisition not built on the Salesforce core platform, obviously we cannot use the SFDC concepts like the ARC, the flows, the process builders, workflows, Apex, things of that nature. So SFCC got its own coding concepts and we will one need to learn those coding concepts to be able to work on Salesforce Commerce Cloud. So definitely we cannot apply the SFDC knowledge to work on the SFCC based e-commerce system. Okay, hope I'm clear. Yes? Okay. Okay. Now, let us talk about what is e-commerce. So, nowadays, especially as I mentioned, after COVID, right? Now everything is online, right? From the groceries to probably apparel, the shoes, whatever, right? The Amazon, Flipkart, we are used to it by this time. So now, E-commerce, we generally think of e-commerce as buying or selling the products, only products online, right? So let us take one example. One may sell, for example, washing machines, washing machines online, and the other may sell the washing machine services online, the service, right? So when it comes to e-commerce, it's not necessarily be a product always. It can be the services as well, okay? So it can be the physical products, or it can be the services as well. For example, insurance. We can buy an insurance online where there is an e-commerce, right? So e-commerce is nothing but the buying or selling the products or services online. Now, with little bit variations here and there, there are several types of e-commerce, right? And let us stick to the B2C, B2B, and D2C for today's session. Now let us talk about what is B2C commerce, B2C e-commerce, right? There are broadly there are divided into three different types: B2C e-commerce, B2B e-commerce, and D2C e-commerce. Let us talk about B2C. For example, Chroma. Chroma is a retailer, right? And let us say I'm going to the Chroma website to buy a HP laptop. If you observe here, Chroma is not the manufacturer of HP, but it is a retailer who sells the HP laptop in Chroma website. Yes or no? Right? So now here Chroma is a business and I am the consumer. So business is selling a laptop to the consumer and I am going to use it. I am not going to resell it or I am not going to use it for some other business purpose. I am going to use it. So that is the B2C commerce. So now Chroma is a retailer, or for example, Reliance Digital as a retailer, selling the products to the end users, right? This is the B2C commerce. Now let us look at the B2B commerce. Now Chroma is selling the HP laptops, right, to the individual users. That is B2C. But Chroma needs to go to HP to buy the products in bulk. Yes or no? Right? So they need to go to the HP to buy the products in bulk, and then they will sell those products to the individual customers. Now the relationship between the HP and Chroma, or the type of e-commerce that is happening between HP and Chroma is nothing but the B2B commerce, the business to business, right? So Chroma is buying the laptops from HP, but Chroma is not going to use those laptops, right? In turn, those laptops will be sold to the individual customers, right? So now the type of commerce that is happening between HP and Chroma is B2B and the type of e-commerce that is happening between Chroma and the individual customer, individual user, right, like you and me, that is B2C. 
to C commas. Am I clear? Yes? Okay. Now, coming to D to C, direct to consumer, it is almost similar to the B to C e commerce. It is almost similar to the B to C e commerce, but one difference is HP is directly selling the products to the individual customers. What it means is that HP is the manufacturer of laptops, and instead of reaching to the individual customer through a retailer, they are directly reaching out to the individual customer, direct, direct to consumer, that is D2C. Now, the reason why I am talking about the different e-commerce websites, e-commerce e e types is, the Salesforce Commerce Cloud, which is the demandware piece, which came into the Salesforce ecosystem through the acquisition, that is for the B2C, the very first one, that is suitable for the building the B2C websites. Now, when it comes to the B2B and DTC, Salesforce does have these two platforms as well. And these two are built on the core platform. And here is where we can use our SFDC knowledge, right? Whatever it is like the flows, process builders, whatever, right? So those kind of uh, technologies can be used in case of B2B and D2C, but not in B2C because it is completely a different technology altogether. Am I clear? Yes, everybody? Okay. So now, before moving to the architecture of Salesforce Commerce Cloud, let us take if there are any questions. Any questions, anybody? Online? Yes. So, something similar to, uh, so there is something called backend. There is something called front end, right? So back end is the place. We'll talk about it anyways. So it got its own coding concept. There are few things that can be achieved by the configuration, but we need to code. Okay, so there are different coding concepts like Apex, process builders, flow builders, things of that nature. Yes, we do we do need to code. No, no, just a second. Like people, if you have a questions, please raise your hand. Our people will come and hand out the mic to you. So, Yugandar, you said uh, this uh, SFCC is not on the Salesforce platform. So, it's a purely head headless component, right? You're talking about? Uh, no, it's not headless. Okay. So, Salesforce Commerce Cloud also got the headless architecture as well. Okay. Uh, but it's purely uh, a different technology, like uh, um, not using the Apex things of that nature. So, it's, it it again follows the MVC architecture. No, but okay. when when I said headless component, right? It does not have any front end skin on it. So everything has to be built using the Angular or the HTML frameworks. So right? it does have both back end and front end. Front end, it's sorry, the pre-built one. Yes, pre-built. Yes, pre Instead of using APIs, you just you directly have the yeah, front end which you can directly right, right. plug and play. That's right. Thank it, you. It got both. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, we need to have uh, the website, hmm. then we can use the front end plus back end combination, which is already there. Hmm. And if we need some native apps, okay. for example, headless. Yes. Uh, we do have the APIs where we can integrate with the React, Flutter, things of that nature. Right. Thank you. Uh, Yuga, Yuga, sir. Yep. There's a question online uh, which Major, Mr. Ajay is asking. He says that uh, there are some sites that itself is built on B2B, but uh, they're using B2C SFCC to build those sites. Why yeah. is that the case? Yeah, so it depends. So if we need the pure B2B, then we cannot use uh, the SFCC as a platform. If we need lim very limited capabilities, right? For example, if you look at the B2B, we cannot buy one, right? So we cannot buy one quantity in the B2B website. We need to buy in bulk. That can be achieved even in B2C, but it is not to the full capacity. Okay, so B2C is suitable, uh, I mean, SFCC is suitable for B2C, maybe up to some extent, with a little bit of customizations for B2B, but not to the full extent. Okay, it's not the right platform for the B2B. We, if need very limited features, maybe yes, but if you want to have the pure B2B websites, then it's not. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's. I think it. there is a question. Hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ratika. So I just want to know that if we can't use Salesforce knowledge in this cloud, so what will be the role of the developer there? Yes. How we can develop. Things? So we cannot use Salesforce coding concepts like Apex, 
things of that nature. But it got its own coding concept. So we need to learn a new language? Yes. Okay. So it's a good change for the career prospective. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely it will be a, um, uh, you know, uh, some add-on uh, to your skill set. So it uh, would be similar to FX or we need to like Java or something else? Uh, no. Um, so there are, uh, anyways, we'll talk about it. So there is something called front-end, uh, oh, even in the yeah. coding. Uh, there is something called uh, the back-end. For the back-end, we use something called B2C Commerce API. It's mm -hmm. almost similar to Java. Okay, and what about UI? Uh, okay, and for the front-end, something similar to JSPs in Java, we have something called ISML. Tagging, uh, it's a uh, um, tag based, uh, the language, uh, it's a combination of HTML, mm -hmm. the ISML tags, uh, JavaScript, CSS, things of that nature. Kind of similar to LWC. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. As you said, right, SFCC support B2C. So, B2C, uh, it's like a managed package you install on SFDC or it just you purchase a license for that? No, no, it's a completely different product. Okay. Uh, it's not built on the core. So, we cannot, there is no concept of managed package or unmanaged package. Okay. Um, so, it's, it's completely separated from the core. It's not core, it's not built on the core in fact. Okay, like you connect it with the APIs, is it? Um, can you elaborate your question? Like basically, um, how do you connect SFDC with B2C? Like Salesforce, you have the Salesforce platform, right? Yes. So now you said B2C, it's supported by SFCC, right? So how do you connect those two dots? So SFCC is a framework used to build the B2C commerce websites, right? So we don't need to connect with SFDC at all. It's a complete, so it is in the Salesforce ecosystem, but it does not interact with the Salesforce core platform. Okay, it's a separate system altogether. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. SFCC is a rebranded version of demand pair or upgraded version of the demand pair? See, the enhancements are in, it is um, in progress, right? So if it, um, the demand pair was rebranded to Salesforce Commerce Cloud, but the enhancements are there. It's continuing in the platform. Okay, it's not the completely rebuilt. No. Okay, so whatever was there in demand that is still there today, but maybe with little enhancements for the platform itself. Hello. Uh, so we have a playground, right? Like for sales cloud, CPQ service cloud. So is there a playground that we can use for SFCC? No. So unless you are a partner, uh, we will not be able to get a playground. So then uh, what is the plan? Like how do we uh, get trained up by ourselves? Like there is cloud we have where we can learn and Yes. So even uh, if you look at um, the outside markets, right? I, I never came across any training institute um, having the Salesforce Commerce Cloud as their you know, training plan. One major reason for that is we will not be able to get the sandboxes for free. Okay? And I think it is possible only through a partner. Right, but I mean, so we have, we are so, we are so many people sitting here, so we just want to learn Salesforce Commerce Cloud now. So I don't expect everybody to learn in this one hour session, right? But after going home or in our free time, if you want to learn this, how do we learn this? More. So, see, the, the documentation, everything is online, okay, so that is there, but with respect to the sandboxes, we have to be a partner like um, the ISV, can be ISV partner, or it can be a Salesforce partner. So, we have to be one of these two to be able to get those sandboxes, and that answers your question as well. Yeah. The ones who are looking for learning, right? So talk to your company. I mean, like you can talk to your partners, okay? So your partner can reach out to your AEs, and uh, AEs can help you there, okay? Salesforce AEs. So again, it is similar to marketing cloud. Marketing cloud, you will not have uh, a sandbox, right? Unless you are a partner. 
you have a trial ad thing which is kind of on a PPT stuff. Uh, that is all okay. But uh, this one, similar to Marketing Cloud and SFCC, you will not have a uh, org where you can work on it. So talk to your AEs. If you are in a partnered company, uh, they will help you out. Okay. No? Mike. Not yet. And it is safe harbor. So. Yeah. One, and uh, just to add on to that, one second. We are writing some blogs. Uh, by going through those blogs, you can get some insight about Commerce Cloud. Every week, two, three blogs are coming in. Uh, uh, I mean, Cloud Odyssey, uh, I mean, these sites and all, okay, in LinkedIn and all. We are posting every every week two, three blogs. So by going through those blogs, you can get a lot of insights about Commerce Cloud, what we are doing, what are the new releases, everything. Just to add on, uh, you know, if you're very serious about, you know, learning this new, uh, you know, feather in your skill set. So you should be seriously considering your next career option as Cloud Odyssey, <laughs> right? So that's where, you know, you can learn the best from the industry. I, I was about to say that, Raghu. Thank you. I feel you, man. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, uh, actually, in the interest of time, I'll allow one more question, and then we'll continue the session. Again, we do have a Q&A. Uh, in the separate slot, okay? Just in the interest of time. Yeah. Last question, please. So, yeah, I have a question. I have worked on Experience Cloud, which was earlier known as Community Cloud. So, how uh, Experience Cloud is different from uh, uh, SFCC? Because in this, we are allowing customers to purchase some products and creating websites that we can do on Experience Cloud as well. So, how different is it from Experience Cloud? See, even here, if you look at the Salesforce arc, and experience cloud. Here, the data is stored in your ARC, and in the experience cloud, using the LWC components, I guess, right? We, we can pull the data from the ARC and show that to the customer in the, in, in the experience cloud side. It is something similar to that. But here, the back end is not ARC, the front end is not experience cloud. Because it is a different technology. For example, let us say a PHP website with some database in the back end, right? So there, the backend is that database, and PHP is frontend, for example. So here, there is something a different back backend and different frontend. But we can compare the website, the frontend like the Experience Cloud, and the backend like the ARC. Okay, but it's a di different technology altogether. Sorry, just to add on, since the comparison came uh, for the Experience Cloud, right? So the word community itself. You know, tells you that it is meant for, you know, for people who do the common activities, right? For example, a community of people, community of people, for example, students portal, right? Or alumni portal, right? Or for example, let's say you are a community living, you know, you are in an apartment, let's say you want to have a portal for them where they have common issues to resolve and all, right? When it comes to commerce cloud, the word commerce is meant for business, right? The word experience and community are meant for, you know, you have a people together are doing something, right? Commerce cloud is meant for business, right? Though we do uh, build sites on the experience cloud, but it really doesn't mean that you'll be selling the products there, right? You can build that, you can customize in whichever we want, but the meaning and the essence of the experience cloud is entirely different, and the commerce cloud comes with a different ang angle altogether, right? Hope it answers. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the answer. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Now we'll continue the session. I knew you will look at me like a villain, but still we have to do that in the interest of time. Sorry. Yes, you can come. But I'll make sure most of your questions are answered by the end of this session. Sure. Okay. So let us talk about the Salesforce Commerce Cloud architecture, the most important one. So we need to understand. So though we do not need to worry about the architecture of Salesforce Commerce Cloud, right? Because everything is hosted by the Salesforce. Though we are going to discuss about the architecture, we will not be able to interact with any of these components of this architecture in our day-to-day -day life. But still, it will be beneficial to have a fair understanding on what is what, right? So now, the Salesforce Commerce Cloud, it also follows the multi-tenant architecture, right? 
and every tenant so we call it as a tenant or we call it as a realm right you can see this here a realm so a pod is kind of a data center right and it can host maximum of 20 tenants or realms every customer so here customer refers to so there you can see right customer a customer b customer c those customers are nothing but the merchants who selected salesforce commerce cloud as their e-commerce platform okay and every customer will be having a realm and those realms are hosted in the pod okay again it is a multi-tenant architecture what it means is that the entire pod is not specific to one merchant right and the merchant needs to share the resources with the other merchants as well right without knowing right so which means that there will be some governor limits something similar to the sfdc and here we call it as quota limits for example the number of apis per request right the number of catalogs we can have the number of products we can have the number of inventory list we can have the number of price books we can have things of that nature so there will be some limits to make sure we are using the platform in the right way and to make sure our website is scalable right and every realm got something like pag and sag right the primary instance group and secondary instance group that we will discuss in the next slide in detail but for now remember it's a multi-tenant architecture and every customer will be having a realm okay and that particular space is allocated for that particular merchant where he can uh, develop and deploy uh, the websites and there is something called web tier application tier and data database tier at the bottom we will also discuss about it in detail in the upcoming slide so we discussed about the pod it is multi tenant and to narrow down further we are going to discuss about the realm the individual realm so what is there inside a realm right so every realm every customer realm or a tenant right will be having two groups primary instance group and the secondary instance group so the secondary instance group contains all the sandboxes right so those sandboxes are nothing but where a individual developer will go and code and unit test the code right so as i mentioned the SFCC got its own coding concept. Using those coding concepts, we are going to code and unit test the code in the sandbox. Okay. The capability of a sandbox is limited. It will not be similar to the production instance. Right. Because in production, there will be thousands or lakhs of customers will be accessing the same instance at the same time, but that will not happen in a sandbox environment. Right. In a sandbox environment, more or less like it's a individual developer only one developer will be using one sandbox at a time maximum but though multiple people are allowed to access one sandbox but ideally it will be one to one mapping during a real time uh, project life cycle scenario now that is about the secondary instance group where there will be sandboxes and those sandboxes will be used by the developers to code and unit test the code Coming to the most important group, that is primary instance group, PAG, it contains three instances, the development, staging, and production. So, production, I think most of you can relate, right? It is the live environment, for example, www.amazon.in, that is a live environment, right? That live environment will be hosted by the production instance, you can see the .com, .jp, .uk, so those are the live websites and there is staging it is also called as the pre-production environment we will see why in a minute staging is the place where we will upload the code once developers are done with their coding in the sandboxes so developers will do the coding in the sandboxes and then they will push the working code to the staging environment and the merchant 
since we are talking about the e-commerce, right? So they will do the all the configurations for their e-commerce websites, be it the catalogs, price books, inventory, the stores, things of that nature. The, all the data will be uploaded to the staging environment. Once everything, both code and data available in the staging environment, it will be replicated to the production environment or it will be replicated, it can be replicated to the development environment. So the development environment is the place where testing will happen. Okay? Anybody from QA team here? QA? Okay. You will be using development environment. Okay? So the development environment is a place where the testing will happen. If there are any bugs, again, a tool like Jira, we can use and raise a bug and that will go to the developer and again developer needs to fix that bug in the sandbox and then upload the fixed code to the staging environment and then replicate to the development, test it there. If everything goes well in the development, from staging, again, we can replicate that to the production. Okay? So that is how it works. So anyways, we have a separate diagram to replicate this uh, life cycle. But overall, that is where we use these kind of instances like the development, staging, and production. So once again, sandbox for the developers, development environment for QA, staging, it is for the merchants and also for the developers to upload the code and do some configurations. And production, it is for the live customers where the real-time orders will be accepted. Right? Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So, we saw the POD architecture, the overall architecture. To narrow this down, we saw the real realm architecture and how the individual instance will be, how the production will be, how the development will be, how the staging will be. To narrow this further down, this is the individual instance architecture. Okay? So what happens when a request comes to any SFCC instance? Right? So now, the very first thing is firewall. We will, we will be able to interact with these instances only through the browser since it is a SaaS based. Right? Let us say I am hitting a URL, for example, home page URL. That will first go to the firewall. What a firewall will do in general? What is the job of a firewall? Right? Yeah. So it will basically decide whether a request should enter the system or not. Right? There is a firewall. Right? So that job will be taken care of by the firewall. And let us say it is a valid request. For example, it is a valid request. No bot or no hacker, things of that nature. Now, the load balancer will come into the picture. What this load balancer will do is it will, it will balance the load among the available web servers. Okay? Remember, for sandbox, staging, and development instances, there will be only one web server and there will be only one application server. Okay? Because very limited people will be accessing these instances, right? Development, QA, only few people. Sandbox, most likely one. Staging, merchant and developers, maybe 10 max, right? So that's fine. So we have only one web server and only one application server in case of the non-production instances. In case of the production instance, there will be at least, there will be at least two web servers and two application servers and there will be a load balancer to balance the load among the available web servers. Okay? So now, see, we are talking about the SaaS-based e-commerce framework, SFCC, right? For example, today, during the normal period, let us say only 1,000 customers are accessing the website at any given point in time. So maybe two web servers are sufficient to handle that load. Tomorrow, there is a sale, right? Let us say all of a sudden, the traffic increased to 1 lakh. Now what will happen? The available web servers here will not be able to handle that load. 
Now, due to the elastic nature of Salesforce Commerce Cloud Platform, right, it will automatically add the more web servers and more application servers to handle the incoming traffic. And we do not need to take any, you know, any action against it, right? It will be automatically taken care by the Salesforce Commerce Cloud itself. Okay, so that is the elastic nature of the Salesforce Commerce Cloud platform. Okay, am I clear? Yes. Okay. So now, as we discussed, the load balancer will balance the load evenly among the available web servers. Now, the web server, from the web server, the request will go to the application server and from the application server, if required, it may interact with the database servers and the file system and it will send the response back to the web server and then to the browser where we can see the web page. Yeah? Clear? Okay. So now, the load balancer will, load, will balance the load among the web server and there is something called web adapter. Right? In, within the web server, there is something called web adapter that will route the request to the appropriate application servers. If you observe here, when I talk about the web servers, I said the load balancer will balance the load. But when I talk about the application server, I am talking about routing. Right? It's not balancing, it's routing. Right? The reason behind that is web server is stateless which means that web server doesn't care from where, from which customer the request is coming and from where the request is coming. If a customer is accessing a site, one request might get served by the first web server and the second one might be served by the second web server. Okay? The session, customer who is accessing the site really doesn't matter for the web server. But when it comes to the application server, the session really matter. All the requests getting initiated from the same customer will be served by the same application server, but they might get served by the different web server. Okay, so for application server session really matter, and web server is it doesn't care about the session. So web server is stateless, application server is stateful. Am I clear? Am I confusing you? Yeah, please. Satya? Yeah, so let me give you one scenario. Let us say you wrote a program, right, where you are continuously hitting a particular URL. So the question was like, uh, both not only uh, they'll always not only for sending from the request from the same IP address. So there are chances sending requests from multiple uh, addresses, right? So how does firewall stops you from being entering into the system? So is there any validation in between place or like a particular uh, no. reason wise or something like that? We do not manually put any validations or configure any validations. Then, then let's say today I'm going to launch a product. Let's say I'm launching my mobile and that's a two craze. Let's say an Apple 15 or something like that. Now people are crazy about it. Now how does it will handle the load balance? You said load balancer will handle it. But going into that scene, uh, the ha hackers might uh, get, a ch get a leakage or something like that. Like uh, we can have click jack or injection of the linking, right? So how that, that will stop in the uh, market, this SFCC? Yeah. That's the so there are two things that we can do in this particular case. One is we can add some validations um, within the code itself okay, to filter some of the requests. So what will happen is some people will try to inject the JavaScript manually in the website to make the redirections happen uh, to some other website or some other URL. right? So those kind of things we can take care by customizing, uh, adding a small snippet of code. right? And we do that for almost every single client. And 
when it comes to uh, the firewall, you know, um, if they are in requests are getting initiated from the multiple um, IP addresses, right, which looks to be valid, then I don't think firewall can do anything here, right? But for example, there are certain situations. For example, we are you are tra trying to connect with SFTP or FTP, for example, right? So those IP addresses needs to be whitelisted with the firewall. Okay, so there are certain things firewall can definitely do, and there are certain things which firewall cannot do. We can implement from the code itself. Thank you. Hi. So routing, we got it that there must be some functionality behind that. But about the uh, balancing. So what is, I got your point that you can redirect and all, but you will do when you will like know that you will do. I want to know what is already existing that is doing the balancing. What is there which is doing the balancing? Uh, like how it is going to one application server, two different applications server, whatever the request we have. In the background, what is the functionality that is working there? Um, so if you understand uh, your question correctly, how that balancing will happen yeah. by the load balancer, right? There must be some amount of, like there must be something now, like that, okay, this request, this amount of request is there, then after that it should like go to some other server. Like that, it is there or? No, no there is no specific number given by the Salesforce Commerce Cloud with mm -hmm. respect to the number of requests it's getting. Mike. There are some load balancing algorithms back background. Round robin and random load. Okay. Based on the persistence request, it will take care accordingly. Okay. Got it. Thank you. But we do not have any access to those kind of algorithms or the specific number things of that nature because, again, it is SAS. So let's say I'm taking only for uh, one lakh requests. Is there something? Uh, hard point where uh, I'm purchasing, I'm purchasing a, a instance today, okay? So I'm expecting one lakh users today. Or So what if I get more than that? So how Salesforce does uh, the charge? I mean, based on the uh, request they charge or how it is? Like it's a fixed price. Um, so though we don't have complete, at least uh, I don't have so a high complete, level idea. complete visibility to... into how the pricing works between the merchant and uh, uh, the Salesforce. Uh, but there is something called GMV, gross merchandise value, okay. right? Uh, it's based on the conversion. So if the, his, the amount, order amount, then some percent, based on that, Salesforce will charge the client. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Hi. Yeah. Uh, considering this as an already built SaaS product, right? So are we supposed to worry about all these load balancers or firewalls no. or things like that? No, 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 no. So please, please. Don't worry about that because it is just for your knowledge what happens behind the scenes. Because I see it's going in the infrastructure level. Yeah, yeah. We have to, uh, the other things what we need to do in, as a product, we have to configure the products and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So yep. I believe we are digging deep into the infrastructure level here, which, right. are we going to configure here or is it allowed? Um, not for today's session at least. Okay. Okay. Because but today's session is to give you overall understanding on what is Salesforce Commerce Cloud and where to use it and how to use it. But there are definitely uh, some upcoming webinars planned okay. where we will uh, show you the configurations part, the coding part, things yeah, like because that. Because from post account platform, what we see is we have a platform and we just access the database and yep. Yep. read our logic. Yep. So I'm trying to just correlate here yep. where the product comes and yep. Yep. what are the customizations what we, are can, we can do. So yep. this goes into the infrastructure layer which... Oh, no, no, the infrastructure uh, ends almost here. Right, so... Okay, so next, uh, wait for the upcoming slides. Okay, so we'll definitely cover some interesting things. Hi, my name is Rohit. Yeah. My question is, uh, in the uh, sandbox org, we, in while developing Apex, we use developer console, which is like native for developing. Uh, here, we don't use any of the Apex or anything of that nature. So what do we, where so, do we code? So here, we can code it in the VS Code or Eclipse, right, or some equivalent IDE. Go and refresh the website. For example, kind of the experience builder uh, website kind of, right, there you can see the output. Similar yeah. to LWC. LWC, right? yes. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing cloud-based uh, development, right? 
on cloud yes, development yeah is cloud yes so we code in the vs code and the code will get uploaded to your server the compilation the interpretation everything happens in the server like apex thank you we'll take one last question from teams yep. and then we'll go to coffee break sure okay the question from mahesh from teams is what is the, what is the server in which commerce cloud hosted aws or azure or hyperforce we don't have visibility to that okay <laughs> So very long back, I heard it is Apache Tomcat. Okay, but uh, we don't have much details into it. Mr. Mahesh in Teams, hope it answered your question. So, yeah, thank you so much. Yuganda, can we? Um, we'll just cover this. Okay, the last slide, and then we'll go for a coffee break. Okay, so let us continue. So whatever we have discussed, the developer life cycle right so that is replicated in this picture so if you look at it there is a sandbox where the developer will code and unit test once he is done with the unit testing and the code is working perfectly then the code will be moved to the staging environment from the staging environment the code and data right both will get replicated to the development environment where testing will happen so once we are done with the testing and if everything goes well, then we can replicate the code and data to the production environment. So from the production environment is a place where the real orders will get placed and those orders will get exported to the third OMS systems, order management systems, right? So most of us knows till the order confirmation page, right? So what happens after that is the order will go into the order management system, right? For fulfilling your order. And there are certain integrations, right? So we can integrate with the third party systems based on the feeds or APIs, things of that nature, right? So this is the complete the life cycle during the development process. Okay. Okay. Just we go for break. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much, everyone. Now we'll take a quick five minutes coffee break coffee, tea and the snacks were over there. I request you all to gather here in five minutes. Please. <laughs> yeah, please. And the restrooms are... Yeah, which is on the ticket. And I don't know the subject. Mother Smith. Who is it? Then who is Mother Smith? Hi everyone, once you are done with your coffee tea, I request you all to gather at the places, please. I feel like I am on a police and you guys are showing me something, like showing me your licenses, crazy. Yeah, give me 100 for your <laughs> late commerce. Give me 100, huh? So you're totally occupied and then surrounded. I request everyone to get back to your places, humble request, we'll start the session.
Everyone, please assemble at your places. Guys, yeah, let's begin, guys. I request everyone to come back. Please. We'll have a break again. We'll do a networking then. We'll start. Yeah, yeah. We do have a lunch break, networking break. At that time, you can again connect and interact with each other. <laughs> People, we are starting it. I request all outstanding people. Guys, at the last. People who are standing out. Come, 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 come. Soon, soon, soon. Take the cups and uh, have a seat, guys. Take the cups. Move in, move in, move in. Chalo, Asan, can, yeah, we can okay. start. Yes, we can start. Thank you, thank you so much, people. People, a quick uh, information. It's like in the interest of time, the rest session will go on. I allow Q&A at the end of the session. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. And again, I'm reminding you, people, the, after this session, we do have a lunch. And then we have a guest talk on education cloud and health cloud. And then the agenda. You knew it, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Shall I get started? Yes. So we discussed about uh, the SFCC instances, right? The sandbox, staging, development, and production. Now, Coming to the SFCC tools. So if you look at the SFDC org, that is the place where we configure the data. Right? But in the org, we can configure any kind of data. Right? Maybe for the sales cloud, service cloud, health cloud, education cloud, things of that nature. Right? But when you talk about SFCC, you should always keep the e-commerce in mind, right? So the SFCC platform is not intended to do everything, but it is intended to do only the e-commerce 
websites in intended to build the e-commerce websites right so even here we need something similar to arc where we can configure the data like the catalogs the products product information the price of the product inventory of the product yes or no right so those kind of things can be done in a tool called business manager it is something similar to the arc where we configure the data in case of the core platform okay so business manager is the backend where we configure the data and using the coding concepts we pull the data from the business manager and show it to the customer like the product information the categories information things of that nature now coming to the control center see so far we discussed about the architecture of salesforce commerce cloud right from the pod realm and then the individual instance but we do not have visibility into we cannot see all of that in our day to day life right so now all you all you will have is a url for your instance be it the staging environment production environment developer development environment or a sandbox you will just have a url something similar to your experience cloud site or your the sfdc org url things of that nature right so for example some day let us say your business manager or your website is performing very slow okay and you want to restart your sandboxes or you want to restart your staging or development now control center is a tool where you can restart your instances how many of you created a playground and you configured a lot of test data and you messed up and created new one almost everybody right so now using the control center what we can do is there is an option to reset a sandbox so what it will do it will wipe out the entire data that you have created and it will give you the same sandbox but without the data that you have created earlier okay so you can it's kind of the format option you will get a fresh sandbox with that reset option in the control center so using the control center if your instances are performing slow you can restart the instances you can stop the instance or start the instance and you can reset an instance so that is the application of control center and coming to the account manager see we are talking about the business manager where the data will be configured we are talking about the control center where the instances can be stopped or started we can start the instance or we can reset the instance so there should be some security behind all of these tools right so account manager is a place where we will create the users and give access to the tools of salesforce commerce cloud like the control center and the business manager and there are a lot of other tools right but for now let us stick to the control center and the business manager right so we first need to create if you want to get access to any tool of you need to have an account in the account manager first from there we will be giving the access to the remaining tools of salesforce commerce cloud is that clear am i confusing you okay so now coding i think this is the place most of you are interested in right the vs code so here is a place where we can code right both front end and the back end and then we can connect to your sandbox we can connect to the sandbox upload the code and test the code and then push the code to the staging environment i saw a question in the chat how the code will be moved to the staging environment right it will not get moved automatically because your staging and sandbox environments are not connected automatically right so you need to have any something called something like jenkins to push the code to read the code from the repository like github or bitbucket 
and then move the code to the staging environment. So that is how it that works. Now, we are talking about the e-commerce websites, right? Almost every e-commerce websites will be having certain features which are very common, right? Every e-commerce website will be having a home page with header and footer, a PLP product listing page where we can see the product tiles and product detail page, the profile section where you can see the order history and your personal information, things of that nature, the cart and checkout. So these are the pretty common flow in a, any e-commerce website, right? But that doesn't mean that whenever you are starting the implementation of a new e-commerce website using Salesforce Commerce Cloud, you do not need to start right from the scratch every time. So SFCC itself provides something called storefront reference architecture, otherwise called as SFRA, which is a reference application, a very base site, right, with all essential features that any e-commerce website should have, right? So if you are starting implementation of a new project, then don't code right from the scratch. Instead of that, take SFRA as a base, which is already having the, all the essential features. On top of that, you do the customizations using the coding concepts or the configurations in the business manager to meet the customer requirements. Am I clear? Yes? Easy? Or difficult? Okay. So now, SFRA, let me talk about SFRA in a little bit detailed way. So SFRA storefront reference architecture, how many of you shop in the desktop when you are not in office? How many of you shop in mobiles? I mean, e-commerce. I mean, how many of you shop in, for example, Amazon in the mobile? Right? So most of us use the mobiles to do the e-commerce shopping, right? Online shopping, right? So now SFRA comes as a mobile first architecture. So it was developed keeping the mobile users in mind, right? It is optimized for the mobiles so that the speed of the site will be more compared to, you know, um, compared to the earlier versions of the desktop focused websites, right? So it is more, it comes with mobile first approach and it also works well in the tablet and desktop. So single website works in all devices based on the width of the screen. You do not need to have one website for the mobile, one website for the tablet, one website for the desktop. A single website and works well in all the devices. And it comes with a couple of websites, a couple of reference applications, Refork and Refork Global. Refork is basically single currency and single language. And Refork Global, it is multi-currency and multi-language. Okay. So now, when you are, when you want to start a project, a new implementation based on single currency and single language, you better take Refork as a base for your implementation. If you are going to implement a multi-language site, then you better take Refork Global as a base and start adding your customizations according to the business needs. Okay, clear? Okay, so cartridge. So before we move on to the SFRA cartridge stack, let us try to understand what is a cartridge first. Okay, so cartridge is kind of a Java package where you can write the code. So whatever the code that we are going to write in SFCC, that code will go into something called cartridge. It is nothing but a folder structure with some predefined folder names where everything will go into the specific folders. So that cartridge stack, so it comes with multiple layers like base, plugin, link and custom. So the base is nothing but 
the SFRA code base, right? So whatever Salesforce Commerce Cloud provides by default with all essential features of e-commerce. So that will go into the base layer. And plugins, if we need any additional features, for example, wish list, product, product, comp product comparison, things of that nature, that can go into the plugin layers, and even those plugins will be provided by the Salesforce Commerce Cloud community itself. And there is something called link layer. It is to integrate with the third party. See, if you look at the e-commerce website, there are certain features which are essential. For example, payment. There should be a payment gateway. For example, razor pay, pay you, things of that nature. And there is something called tax calculation. There is something called ratings and reviews. There is something called the digital marketing, the email marketing, like Salesforce marketing cloud, things of that nature. So those kind of integrations can be added in the link layer. But if you look at the base layer, plugin layer, and link layer, you are using the cartridges developed by someone else, right? You are not the owners of those cartridges. So Salesforce recommends not to do any changes to these three layers. Just take it and integrate with it. If you want to do any customizations, code is in front of you, and those customizations needs to happen in the custom layer. Or if you want to do any code changes on your own, then also you should be using the custom layer to easily adopt the future changes. Okay, you can assume the base plugin link. So people who are having experience in SFDC, you can assume these three layers like the packages, managed or unmanaged packages, whatever. Okay, but here we will be having the access to the code. We can see what is there in these three layers. Now, the SFRA architecture is kind of the MVC architecture. So let us see the coding concepts now, right? So what is model, what is view, and what is a controller here? So now, something similar to the SFDC here, we do have the standard and otherwise called as system objects and custom objects where we can store the data, right? We need to have something to store the data. So here also we use the system objects and custom objects to store the data. For example, the products, the catalogs, inventory, price, whatever. And we use something called controllers that will execute the business logic. Right? Uh, so it will basically read the data from the system objects or custom objects. It will process the data. And then it will send the data to the view. Here, view is nothing but ISMLs. It is called Internet Store Markup Language. It's a tag-based language. Right? It's a combination of the inbuilt ISML tags plus HTML plus JS plus CSS, plus images, things of that nature, whatever is required for the front end. So there are three things here, the model, view, and the controller. So the controllers will execute the business logic. Even here, we call it as a controller. View, that will be taken care by the ISML templates, is something similar to the JSPs. And the, uh, the models, which will where we store the data, that will be taken care by the system objects and the custom objects. Can you open the URLs? So for the past two slides, two to three slides, I have been talking about SFRA, the mobile first architecture, things of that nature, right? So these are those uh, reference applications. So where we have the complete e-commerce functionality already. So this is the base site provided by the Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you want to do any customizations, use this site, and you will have the code access, and you do the customizations on top of the on top of this base code. So this is uh, the refarc. If you can see, it is single language English and USD currency. Can you go to the other one? Look at this. You do have a con uh, currency select uh, country selector here, right? Where you can select switch between the multiple languages. And whenever you switch the language, it will automatically change the currency as well. Can you go to any PLP? PLP. Yep. OK. 
Okay, so you can see the currency is in euros or GBP, whatever, based on the configuration in your business manager. Okay, so these are the base sites provided by the Salesforce Commerce Cloud itself. Okay, again, use these sites instead of coding right from the beginning. Okay, next one. So whatever is there, that is the standard layout, but you can always customize. So you'll have access to the entire code, okay? So you also have something called a page designer here, which is something similar inspired by the LWC components, okay? So you can also use that um, to drag and drop the components. So you have both. Yeah, you can have the fixed layout, you can also have the dynamic layout. Okay, so that is, the fundamentals of the Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Now, why Salesforce Commerce Cloud, right? Why one should use the Salesforce Commerce Cloud as their e-commerce platform, right? So now, the scalability. As we discussed, because of the elastic nature of Salesforce Commerce Cloud, we do not need to worry about the traffic that is coming in, right? So as the traffic increases, the Salesforce Commerce Cloud will automatically increase the web servers and application servers to support the incoming traffic, right? So the response times will be very high, right? Compared to uh, the regular uh, e-commerce uh, frameworks. And the one more thing is, it also comes with the inbuilt caching, where we can cache the responses, the most frequently used pages, we can cache those so that Instead of hitting the application server every single time, these responses will be served from the web server itself. And the personalization, it is the most important thing. So we often see, you have recently visited, right? You may also like, right? The personalized shopping experience that can be achieved in the Salesforce Commerce Cloud and it also supports, it is, it is also integrated with the Einstein, the Salesforce Core Einstein. Now, the multi-channel support, so we can also implement the features like the buy online pickup in store, buy online ship to store, right, ship to home, right, that is the regular one, ship to home, and also we can sell the products using something called open commerce API, so it also exposes the API to the outside world by using the OCAPI, we call it as OCAPI, open commerce API, and we can sell those products in probably in Facebook, Instagram, or Pinterest, things of that nature. And also we can have the native mobile apps, right, iOS or Android, not necessarily be, we should use SFRE always if client merchant prefers to have their own mobile app instead of going with the responsive design web kind of websites, they can also have uh, the native apps powered by the work app. And flexibility, so if you look at the layered approach that we discussed about, the base, plugin, link, right, so though those cartridges are kind of the managed or unmanaged, unmanaged package in case of uh, the SFDC, we will have the code in front of us. We can customize that code to the any extent, any, any extent um, uh, depending on the business requirements and any kind of features that we need. So we can always customize the code is in front of us. It is highly customizable platform. And integration, so we often, we will need to integrate with some um, many third parties for any e-commerce website, again, like payment gateways, right, things of that nature. So it uh, supports the REST, SOAP, SFTP, FTP, WebDAV protocols. So using those protocols, we can integrate with any third party system. And the security. Of course, it is secured by the account manager uh, credentials, and also it does have the two-factor authentication, and it also supports the role-based access to the business manager where the data is stored. And it is very common to save the credit cards, right, in the e-commerce websites, and those credit card numbers will not get saved automatically, and the, those credit cards will be encrypted, and then will be stored in the system. Not, no sense to data will be stored in the system as it is. And SFRE, the biggest advantage of SFRE is it is mobile first, right? It is already working well in all three devices. 
the mobile, tablet, and desktop, right? And you already have the very base website. So you do not need to build any website right from the beginning, right? You already have something, and you already have the plugins and links implemented by someone else, which will speed up the delivery process. Okay? Okay, so that's all I have for today. Now open for questions. Yeah, the session was really interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, yes, Yuganda. Uh, yeah, Yuganda. Yeah. Uh, Uganda. Um, my first question would be: We have we are doing a product configuration, right, in the SFCC. Yeah. How will it match back, sync back with the Salesforce? Because if I have a website where I sell the products, where the customers can come and buy the product, and second one is when the people, the sales teams, my sales teams, not all, not everybody is tech savvy, right? They wanted to buy a product, especially large projects, products where there is a lot of co configuration. Okay. Yes. In that case, uh, we need to have product uh, catalog both the places, right? In that case, does the catalog which is created in SFCC does it sync back with the sales? It will not. Yeah. Automatically. Okay. You have to uh, sync it back. Yeah, we need to sync it back using the APIs. Okay. Yes. So because the structure, products, I mean, the structure would be different. Yeah. It will be different. It will right? be different. Yeah. It will be totally different. Totally different. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So though we are using uh, terminology wise, though we are using like system objects and uh, uh, custom objects, exactly. uh, but the structure is totally different. Until it is synced completely with the sales force where it can automate, it can directly sync. It will not directly sync. No, no, as of today we don't have it, but in future if at all sales force comes with, because we use Conga. The reason why I'm asking this question, I want to be clear with that. We use the Conga where we have the digital e-commerce website and we have a quotation process, okay, mm -hmm. CPQ. Okay, so in that case, we uh, in that place, it uses the same, the out of the box Salesforce product to table, right? Object, whatever you call it. Yeah. On top of that, Salesforce uh, Conga has some extensions, configurations, okay. right? Uh, um, we use that for the um, for selling it from the Salesforce to the uh, uh, not the storefront users, and also for the storefront users, we use the same thing. Yep. Uh, same product configuration. Right. So that the pricing, everything remains the same. Again, the pricing is subjective because that is dependent on how these are able to customer and all, all, all of it. But uh, there it uses one product table, or one yeah. product configuration yeah. only. Yeah. But here you have to do two. Yeah, two. Yeah. One two for uh, the Salesforce sales course yeah. and the other one for uh, uh, the SFCC because okay. two different systems. Okay. And, and, but uh, yeah, but yeah. Um, just a point here, but in case of B2B and D2C, we don't have that headache mm. uh, because uh, they are into the core platform. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll take the question later. Yeah. Is there something like a, a marketing cloud connect or a Salesforce connect where you said you can sync, but how does it, how is it done? Is it through API or APIs. Is some configuration e mapping you need to do? So there are two things. One can be APIs, and the other can be the flat types. So you don't have... A, like just like the marketing cloud connect, there's no product as such to map it. No, it will not sync back automatically. Uh, we need to use some connector, uh, like right. again. Are those connectors available from Salesforce, or you need to build it on your own? Someone has to build it. Okay, custom build. It, right? Yeah, custom build. Yeah. Okay. My one more question is: you said it's secure, right? Can we leverage Salesforce Shield there? Salesforce Shield. Uh, no, uh, because uh, it is a completely different system okay. again. So whatever is there in Salesforce, we can use only those. I mean, Salesforce Commerce Cloud, we can use only those. Okay. For example, I have an insurance seller. Okay. So I am recommending the SFCC. So what are the limitations or considerations before even proposing to the client? So what are the limitations or considerations I need to take in as an architect or as a lead to account it? So before even implementing the SFCC. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't see any limitations here. There is no limitations. There is no okay. limitations. So you are so at least that. see the platform limits are always there. Uh, something similar to the governor limits. Uh, but when it comes to the insurance industry specifically, I don't see any problem in using. For example, any industry, right? For example, I am going to propose a SFCC. So, what is the effort you are thinking about out of the box configuration? Similarly, if you give like financial services cloud, right? So you can have like give the native app, just configure some of the Profiles or permissions or whatever it's needed, so that's dust for me. So similarly, what is there in SFCC where I can configure to the client is like effort kind of stuff. Like, do I need specifically? You said about payment integration, right? Payment gateway integration. 
the payment gateway integration do they provide any connect to the specific payment gateway or just providing the named credentials yeah. or just so, the api or you need to integrate based on the code which is on the uh, you said about what is it cartridge yeah 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 so uh, when it comes to the effort right uh, there are two things for example if merchant is happy with whatever is there in sfra with respect to the functionalities right maybe later they want to add more functionality to the existing i mean to the sfre but for now to launch those functionalities are fine but still they need to have at least one payment gateway but when it comes to the payment gateway there are connectors available for some of the third parties for example cyber source adn things of that nature if they use then that's fine if they want something new then we need to custom build and that will raise the effort automatically okay so all i would say is it the timelines depends on um, the amount of customization merchant is looking for to the sfra and uh, the um, number of integrations that they are looking for okay but at least when it comes to the integrations at least they need one payment gateway one order management system integration one analytics and maybe one email marketing system right and probably one ratings and reviews most likely uh, so when you told about bse code sync back to the org right you are talking about jenkins or so other copado it's so from the VS code to sandbox, we do not need any Jenkins. Okay. So when, the moment when you save it, the code will get automatically uploaded to the sandbox. Okay. But from, so typically in the uh, developer uh, life cycle, once we are done with the coding, we'll commit to the repository like Bitbucket or GitHub, right? Okay. And from there, how the code will be pushed to the staging environment. So that is the place where the Jenkins or Bitbucket pipelines, GitHub pipelines will come into the picture. So so what in case if I am startup, I don't have Jenkins or some kind of like, still I can do with the regular SFTX process? Yeah, so you can do with the command prompt also. Okay, so even for that build process, there is a separate cartridge provided by the Salesforce Commerce Cloud. So which, which will do a lot of things like um, optimizing the JavaScript static files, uh, things of that nature. You can do it from the command prompt as well. But if you are doing it from the command prompt, we need to make sure the right softwares are installed in that particular system, right? Because it's not SaaS now, right? So we need to make sure, for example, the right node version is installed, the right, uh, the right uh, Git software is installed, things of that nature. But if we use something like Bitbucket pipelines or the hosted Jenkins, we do not need to worry about uh, all that. You can so the, the primarily, so sorry, to, sorry to break you off here. Like in the interest of time, uh, like even in online also people have questions. Yeah. I'll have one question and then we'll continue the session. People so sorry and uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end. Even in the lunch break, Yogandar is available. You can poke him anything. No, no, we're, done, we're done with the session. Done with the Q&A is pending. One Q&A. Uh, okay, just a second. I have one question from online. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. And uh, people, I request you to stay calm at the end. And we are getting some murmuring. Just please, uh, I request you people to be calm. And uh, the question from teams, from Srinivas, it is, I have a question like, is there any difference in B2B prod instances with respect to B2C prod instance, since B2B handle and manage bulk orders? So B2B is not in Salesforce Commerce Cloud, I mean SFCC, right? B2B is built on the core. So we have a org, the SF, I mean, you know, the Salesforce core org, we use org there. But in case of the SFCC, we have the production instance and the sandboxes concept, right? These two are two different systems. I hope Mr. Srinivas from Teams, uh, it answered your question. Thank you. And I had seen a question from the back, back as well. Yeah. I think I have a question. Here. Yeah. Uh, whenever we saw on Amazon or Mintra, so according to our search history and all, they gave us a suggestion. So this product you can purchase and all. So in Commerce Cloud also we can do that one? Like yeah, there stored, is something uh, called uh, the Einstein integration. Okay. Okay, the Salesforce one. Uh, so it will basically suggest the products based on your previous purchase history or based on your previous search history, things of that nature. Only the previous search history and purchase history or if I'm going to purchase first time, so they can suggest like if you are buying this product, you can also uh, purchase this one. Yeah, yeah, you may also like the people who bought this also bought so and so, okay. things of that nature. So no need for the history and all, right? No, no, no. no. Not, not necessarily be because... Uh, it will suggest the products based on what you are doing in the website. Because, it's, for example, the very first time you landed yeah. on the home page, it cannot suggest anything because the system doesn't know what are your interests. So for the Einstein to suggest, 
they needed some data. Like I have to be regularly visit that website for three, four times. May not be, may not be regularly. For example, you are viewing some product, right? Yeah. Maybe the people who, um, who are, who viewed that product before. Yeah, like uh, in Amazon, whenever I purchase something for the first time, he suggests like people who purchase this one, they also go for this yeah, product exactly. and all. Right? So people who bought this also bought this. People who viewed yeah. this, or people are also interested in so and so. Yeah, those kind of things can be done in. For that, we need to provide data for it. Not necessarily, not your data, right? So it can be some other's data as yeah, well. Okay, thank you. So hi. Yeah, please. So I have a no, uh, little technical question. Yeah. Okay. So SFCC is you know, it's having its own platform, right? Yeah. Does it support uh, event-driven architecture? Uh, meaning? Um, you know, see, in Salesforce, right? In nowadays, it's all about events, right? CDC, the platform triggered platform flows, event, things CDC, of that nature. Okay. So does SFCC support? Um, see, there is something called uh, the jobs. Okay, so there are two things. There is something called uh, the jobs, which you can write and schedule it. Okay, the scheduled flows kind of. Okay. okay, that is there. And the second thing, there is something called uh, the open commerce API. Okay. And those APIs we can execute at a particular point in time. For example, after the shipping address is created, after the billing address is created, things of that nature. Okay. So when we want to integrate with the you know, SFCC, then it, it should be through uh, only through API. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you want to integrate with, for example, there are two different systems. Let's say there is a third party to which you want to integrate with. Then yes, you need to integrate with some APIs like REST or SOAP or maybe FTP or SFTP. Okay. Thank you. Hello. YouTube as well. Sure, sure. Like question. It's like, is LWC comes under SFCC? If yes, can you please elaborate this? Yeah. So, <laughs> So LWC, it is basically a core concept, right? As many of you know, but there is a concept called page designer uh, in SFCC also, right? It's kind of the LWC components uh, where we can implement the LWC components and have the layouts like drag and drops. The short answer is not LWC directly, but indirectly it's called page designer in Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Okay, hope oh, Naveen from YouTube live streaming, it answered your question, thank you. Yes, please. Yeah, one more question is, uh, somewhere I've seen um, uh, SFCC supports only XML, or is there another, another um, kind of JSON or something? Uh, no, no. Uh, for example, it, it's the regular REST or SOAP. When it comes to the REST or SOAP, uh, right? Um, for example, REST, we can have any kind of uh, the request and response formats. In case of SOAP, it's always XML. Uh, in case of the flat files, it can be any format, right? But most of the times, for example, you want to export uh, the data uh, out of Salesforce Commerce Cloud. For example, catalog data. Uh, it provides two options, CSV and XML. If you don't want any of these two, for example, you are looking for uh, something like uh, uh, what we call uh, the plain text kind of, right? Then we can customize it. Yeah, there is some you. interesting career question. How is the job market for SFCC beginner and senior architects? <laughs> Most important, maybe. It's Matthew from Teams. Probably out of syllabus for me. <laughs> the Salesforce Commerce Cloud market is really good. Uh, now it is picking up. Uh, if anybody wants to, uh, I mean, uh, they can go and search in uh, LinkedIn. You can see the, I mean, there are plenty of jobs. Okay. Now a little bit slow, but in one or by next quarter, it will be picking up again. Okay. And, in, and India, until uh, last year, there was no site on Salesforce Commerce Cloud almost. Now, many of the uh, Indian sites are coming on to Salesforce Commerce Cloud. We ourselves are working on top of uh, clients from India. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. Cool. We'll take one last question from here. Uh, yeah. uh, I think so okay, we'll take you it. have to stand up. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, in so, fact, on this, ah, yeah. so now I have two questions. On the same question, last question, um, I want to say that I want to ask that if a person is experienced, like five plus, six plus, and already working on Apex, LWC integration, 
and then is it would be a good skip for that person or he can or she or she can pursue with the, the career that he is going on she is going on if you are already into uh, a core platform uh, there is a, a core platform a b2b is there right that would be a best option uh, because now salesforce is pushing a lot on core platform b2b and d2c uh, question that you said that on the server we can reset and all right so for salesforce we have data loader application so that we can upload the data or we can get the data do we have any application that through which we can upload the data so there is there are two options uh, within the business manager where we maintain the data uh, there are uh, inbuilt uh, upload options where you can go and upload it the other option is jobs through the job you can pick the file and import it so it is within that within within no that idea. not within external application it is there within this okay. within and the for the testing purpose business testing on what uh, uh, like you have or uh, business manager developer then you have case then you have production for business testing to where uh, where on what uh, level they should test it uh, most likely they will do the testing in staging environment and who is will also test in that development or QA. developer will also test on that no the development environment is a place where mm -hmm. the QA and uh, uh, the dev team will be testing. If there are so, see dev, dev team, they will be most likely doing the unit testing that happens in the sandboxes itself. Yeah, yeah. And QA team, they will do it in the development while they will be creating a lot of test data, things of yeah. that nature. And um, when it comes to the merchant, they will do the configurations in the staging. Most likely, they will test there itself. That answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Siganda will take uh, one question from YouTube. Sure. How does SFCC compare to other e-commerce platforms in terms of architecture and capabilities? How does SFCC differ? Okay. So the very first thing is it is cloud-based, right? Where we do not need to worry about managing the servers, things of that nature, right? And it is 99.9% .9 available. Right? We do not need to worry about the interruptions, things of that nature. And it got the inbuilt caching mechanism where the most frequently used pages will be cached depending on the time that you are going to specify. Right? And it's highly customizable. Right? You can do whatever the customization that you would like to do. You can always do it. It can be integrated with any third party systems. Right? By using the REST, SOAP, FTP, SFTP, WebDAV, things of that nature. And of course, we can also connect with any middleware systems if something doesn't support, if something Salesforce Commerce Cloud doesn't support. Right? And most importantly, the Wakapi and SFRE. Right? Using Wakapi, we can also have the powerful mobile apps, right? Where the front end is like React or Flutter or something like that. And backend is again SFCC and SFRA, with which you can speed up the development process for all three devices, tablet, mobile, and desktop. Uh, and also using the plugins and uh, the link layers. Okay, thank you. I think Mr. or Ms. Fun and Atrocities, the name is like that. Okay. <laughs> I hope it answered your question. And can we expect a question from last rows? In fact, I'm a backbencher. I have some soft corner on them. <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, hi, I'm Danya. I just wanted to know uh, regarding if, if you already have a product list, approximately how long will it take for you to configure uh, if you're using the SFRE architecture? Looks like that is pretty complete architecture, right? So you have a product list with your experience, like how long will it take for you to set it up entirely up to production? And also the cost, how, how, how much will it take for the setup and the maintenance? So the question is, we have the catalog, the products, products data. And let us say merchant decided to go with SFRA, whatever is there in SFRA as it is, right? And how long it will take to configure that data. So you have the catalog, right? But to load that catalog into the SFCC system, that is nothing but the business manager. We need the data in some specific 
XML format. Okay. See, if it is one or two products, we can go and configure them manually. Let us say if there are like one lakh products. In my experience, I have seen five lakh plus products in an e-commerce website, right? And we need to config. If at all, we need to configure all of that manually. That is highly impossible, right? So we need to configure the. I mean, we need to prepare the data in some SFCC supported XML format. How long it will take to configure the data in Business Manager depends on how long it will take for the merchant to generate the catalog in that XML format, right? And the importing may take, depending on the uh, the catalog size, maybe one or two hours, depending on the catalog size. Once the data is in, if the data is in perfect format, from coding wise, no effort is required, right? As long as we need some customizations, right? Uh, but it depends on how how quickly merchant can generate the data. It all depends on that. One last Hope question. that answers your question. Thank you. Uh, um, in my experience, I work for the medium to large. May not be too small. Yeah, uh, medium to large is fine, I guess. Yeah. Small D2C would be the best option, but we can still implement an uh, 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 SFCC. And to take any site live, it will take a minimum two and a half months to, I mean, based on your business customizations or personalizations, it will take up to uh, six months to nine months also. But if you want to go to the market quickly, since you are by already uh, bought the licenses, it will, with minimum uh, requirements, we can go to the market within two and a half months, two, two and a half months. Okay. And the, if your catalog size is small, the best option is D2C. And if, if, you, if you are already having the core platforms, it would be better to go to D2C. Otherwise, uh, if you work code base, I mean, user base is more, and there are more uh, catalogs and more users are logging in, SFCC would be the best option. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll encourage one question from the back and one question in online. Okay. I totally okay. hand over the mic to him. Okay, he's already having it. Yeah, please. Okay, one more. I'll allow. Uh, yeah, hey, Akash, this side. So, basically, as you said, in Salesforce, we have these LWC components, right? We add them in a pages. And then this communication between the components will be done based on the events or pubs or LMS, right? But when it comes to SFCC, you said that we have a page designer where we'll put the components. How this communication will be done? Is it the same approach that we are following right now or it will be a different? See, uh, we use the page designer most likely for the static pages, not like the forms, things of that nature. But if at all we need to establish the communication, yes, that is also possible. Okay, because end of the day, it is just like a form uh, within a single page. We can use this jQuery to establish the communication or we can also have the server side things. But for this communication, like from one component of one page designer to another page designer, how this will be done? Um, can you give me an example? So let's say I have a two components, right? I'm sending one one uh, information from one component to another component. So we'll be using a parent-child relationship there. But in page designer, in the same screen, we have multiple page designers also, right? So if I've selected something, I want that information in my second page designer, then how will that be done? But everything is in same page. Yeah. Right? We can use client side uh, scriptings like jQuery in that case. OK. Something uh, open library, right? Yeah. Yeah. OK. And another question, uh, we, you just shown that application, right? That you have a lot of images. Yes. So how you, you are storing? It's just in catalog or static resources also we are using? So there is something called static uh, within uh, the Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Uh, we store the images there itself. Okay. But you are free to integrate with any external CMS as well. Hello. Yeah, okay. I'm Nitish. Uh, thank you for the wonderful session. We started. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So I do have one question uh, in career perspective. Sure. So is it, uh, let's say, if someone wants to make his career in the SFCC domain, as you said, it is completely different from the Salesforce platform. So is it mandatory for him or for her to know the, I mean, uh, the Salesforce core platform 
or they can directly start their career in SFCC. So See, if I you want to work in SFCC, then Salesforce core platform is not mandatory. But having the Salesforce uh, core platform knowledge may speed up the learning curve. And uh, what are the skill sets that, that they will require to, you know? So definitely, if you look at the MBC architecture, right, um, the system objects and custom objects that is there, and controllers, that is something we need to learn uh, for SFCC, right? And there is something called ISMLs. So these two are uh, the server side things. And apart from that, we need some front end skills like, for example, Bootstrap for the mobile first approach, jQuery, CSS, HTML, things of that nature. One last question. For the controller, like in uh, Salesforce, we are using Apex for the ML operation. So in the SFCC, which language are we using? Yeah, so we use something called um, B2C Commerce API. It almost, it is almost similar to Java programming language, but syntactically it is similar to the JavaScript. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. People, I totally understand you indulged into the topic. You have multiple questions, but still in the interest of time, we'll encourage one question from here and one, one question from two, teams. Question, one second. Yeah. And on the career perspective, if you want to learn uh, uh, SFCC, uh, the getting the sandbox is only partners, uh, Salesforce partners uh, can get the sandboxes. Uh, like in uh, core platform, you can get playground if you want to try, I mean, do some changes or customize, right? I mean, uh, if you want to uh, test it. But in uh, sales SFCC, you won't get sandboxes just like that. You have to, one has to, organization has to have partnership with the Salesforce. Okay? That is where you, in the outside institute, no one will uh, teach uh, Salesforce Commerce Cloud. They teach only B2B or uh, B2C. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, yeah. last question. Yeah, I have one question. Um, what if we are having a dynamic pricing? Uh, so how we... Uh, Can you stand? Suppose if we are, if at all, um, some sale is going on, and we are having dynamic prices based on the traffic and all. So SFCC supports that? Or? Yes. So there is something called uh, the promotions. Okay, where we where we can uh, trigger the promotions based on multiple things, right? It could be based on the customer specific. Say, for example, uh, all Salesforce employees should get let us say thirty percent discount. We can do that. Coupon based promotions or scheduled promotion. I mean, uh, for example, the scheduled price books. So, say for example, from this time to this time, this price book should be available. From this time to this time, this price book should be activated. Oh. Things of that nature. Yeah. Yes, we can do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, a question from the teams. So it is from Ajay. How do we manage the performance in SFCC? Suppose the client is adding around 1,000 plus different products in the cart, and the loader is running for a long time that the customer doesn't find good. How can we manage these issues here? So basically, the question is how to troubleshoot these kind of issues, right? So there are multiple tools that we can use. Um, so within the Salesforce, uh, Salesforce Commerce Cloud business manager itself. There is something called pipeline profiler. Okay. So running that will tell you which script is taking more time to execute. So depending on that, you can troubleshoot the issue if it is taking more time. And the second thing is the client side, right? You can use the tools like the ping DOM, the Google page insights, things of that nature to see which is taking more time to load, right? So based on the reports from these two tools, you can also uh, fig easily figure out what is going wrong. Okay. Thank you so much. As I hope it answered your question. And I'll take, this is from the teams. And the last question for SFCC session, I'll taking, I'm taking from YouTube. It is from Sheikh Basha. What is services cloud, what are the service cloud connectors? What is the use and when will you use these connectors? Service cloud connectors, yeah. Okay. The service cloud. Um, Say, for example, you have placed an order. Now, you want to connect with uh, the service team, the customer support. You want to raise a ticket regarding an order or regarding a question on your product. If you look at any e-commerce website, the customer support plays a critical role. Critical role, right? There will be contact us form or chat with us, call us, things of that nature, right? So, for example, you can have a form 
within the Salesforce Commerce Cloud, right? Sub, for example, what we call uh, the Web2 case, right? The Web2 case. So you can submit a case so that the case will get registered in the Salesforce Core platform. From there, uh, the service team can pick it up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope uh, Basha from YouTube, it answered your question. Thank you so much, everyone. People, uh, we are stopping the Q&A for now. But Yuganda will be available in the lunchtime also. You can interact with him. And the person who answered the question along with Yuganda is Mr. Rajshekar, our SFCC practice lead from Cloud ODC. I mean, Commerce Cloud practice lead. Now, give, it on a, give a big round of applause to our architect, <laughs> Yuganda, for the fantastic session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Quick two things, people. Uh, people from SFDC Bangalore community, uh, one who registered over there, please go to Kishore in the lunch break. He need to scan those uh, barcodes. And second thing, lunch is ready. People, please, uh, it is provided over there. Please take it. We are giving some 15 minutes. Please, it's a request. <laughs> uh, I request you all to come back in 15 minutes. Please, uh, we can move on for lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much. We and will be people, available. Remember, yeah. the next session, as I said, it's from a Salesforce evangelist having 25 years of experience. He's already, he already came, just waiting to interact with you people. So please so, come back. We have another rotting session. Yeah. We will be there only, myself and Yugandar. You can uh, approach us if you have any further questions. Okay. Please, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. The people in... Oh, live streaming is on.
Guys, hello. I was telling you that we are, we are writing blocks. We are not just writing the blocks just like that, okay? Whatever the information, kind of information we have shared now, what kind of effort that we have put now, the same effort we are putting it in uh, writing the blocks also. If you see any blog, I mean, you can, uh, in Commerce Cloud, you can share the sandbox, okay? In general, if you ask anyone how many, uh, Developers can use the same sandbox at any time. They will say one. One developer, one sandbox. But that is not true. More than one developer can use the same sandbox. So we have a blog. We have written that. Like that, for, it's not like a marketing purpose we are do, uh, doing. It's a real-time examples that we are taking, that we are, uh, we are getting in on day-to-day uh, -day basis, the issues that we are getting and we are finding the solutions and we are writing the blogs. Not only in commerce, B2C, OMS, in every um, module we are writing. All, all, the, all these blogs are real-time uh, issues, okay? At a time, five to six developers or ten, ten developers can use the same sandbox and work on that, okay? But it, can we give it to some, I mean, as I said before, Organization should have partner uh, 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 partnership with the Salesforce to get the sandboxes. Can you share that sandbox with outside of the organization person? No, because that person should have admin access. Okay, within the organization, you can share. If you have that admin access, admin, uh, admin provide access to the uh, access, same sandbox access to multiple uh, developers, they can use. Okay, likewise. We can go through the website, there are multiple, even on page designer, and even, uh, even non-technical non also, okay? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I request people outside, all outstanding people, again, please come inside. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll quickly start in two minutes, the next session, which is on education cloud and the health cloud as well. And people, for your information, whatever you, uh, Rajshekar has shown you, right? We are doing multiple blocks, not only on Commerce Cloud, and the latest Salesforce Clouds, as I said, Education, Health Cloud, Nonprofit, Manufacturing Cloud. We are building assets as well and publishing blocks on it. Just follow us on LinkedIn. You will come to know what and all is happening.
cloud.ec in LinkedIn. All the blocks, everything you will get an info on it. Okay? And we do have it uh, recently, we are trying for government cloud, net zero, consumer goods. On latest clouds as well, we are building assets. That entire information. And if you people are interested in, you can ping us. We can collaboratively work on it. That is also doable. Just let us know. Okay? Thank you so much. Live streaming. The people in online, both in Teams and uh, YouTube, I hope you had your lunch. <laughs> Is it so? I hope so. People, uh, just two minutes, we're going to start the session. I request you all to come back. Okay, quick question. What is the thing we do after having good lunch? Yeah, exactly. But don't do that today. <laughs> Saturday is holiday for sleep. You have to be active, you have to be energetic. And anyway, the speaker is not going to allow you to sleep for sure. Thank you, thank you everyone. Again, I'm Vasant from Cloud.DC. I handle digital engagement and pre-sales as well here. And uh, you will get all our contacts if you follow us on LinkedIn. The latest things, whatever we are doing it. Even in Facebook, YouTube, we are there. And LinkedIn, we do have 6K followers. I hope some of you are already there. And you want to know about latest innovations in Salesforce and MuleSoft, please follow us. Now with that, uh, going to the next part of the session, which is a guest talk from an industry expert. To introduce that industry expert, I'll call Ambika on Dias to give a brief introduction about Dias, about the speaker. Give her a big round of applause, please. Good afternoon to all our esteemed guests. It's absolutely my privilege to introduce you, Mr. Bharat Karu Rangarajan, to all of you today. Bharat holds a master degree from Western Sydney of University, Australia. He started his initial professional career in IT industry as a manager in software kernel and later as an IT manager at Cisco. Bharat holds overall of 28 years of experience. 28 years of experience in leading diverse technology projects and also driving process improvements. He is also an exceptional IT professional and definitely had made his mark in every single role. He is also an agile project management professional and also an expertise in IT IL process adoption, Salesforce consulting and also worked with global delivery office at Cisco Webex. Bharat is also expert in telecom co consulting which spans more than a decade and he brings his domain expertise in operational support system and business support system and analytics to the table. In addition, he has also proven track record of high performing in e-commerce sales offering and also in payment business. Bharat is also an equivalent communicator leveraging in technical business and financial acumen to communicate effectively with the clients, account, executives and their respective teams. So now I'll be like talking about the awards uh, which were awarded to Bharat in his entire professional career. So starting with, he was awarded three times as a best manager at Cisco, Innovator Award at Webex, and Top Performer Award at Webex IT, and Best Customer Support Manager at Cisco IT, and Ace Award Worker at Oracle Consulting, and last but not least, Best Collaborator Award for his exceptional work. Overall, we can say that Bharat is a valuable asset to our Salesforce community and to any organization as a seasoned IT professional with a proven track record of success. And uh, definitely, we are very fortunate to have him with us today. So without further ado, I request Mr. Bharat to come over here with a round of huge applause. Thank you. Please put your hands together. Okay. Um, 
thanks for coming in. Um, it's a very short session for me. Um, I keep talking so that you, you don't go to sleep, right? I know you guys must have had a pretty heavy lunch. I was telling somebody that I always see brown bag sessions, but it is more a white box session today, right? So I'm sure you must have an unboxed session before me, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about a couple of things here, next 15 minutes. Okay, I'm not going to talk much. I need people to come and then talk to me about what are their ideas of how we can better things in the Salesforce ecosystem and why is it important for India as a market for Salesforce, right? And anybody knows why is it so close for Mark Dini of India as a country with Salesforce always? Does anybody have an idea? Is it not? It's not just because you have two development centers in India. It's definitely not. It goes way beyond that. No? No? Whole, whole idea of Salesforce coming into the globe. Comes from India. Sorry, somebody. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'll, I'll talk about it. That's the reason I wanted to know. Good, good. You have read some research about it. Appreciate it. Okay. So, India to Mark Biniyev came in when he was 25. Okay. Um, he was the youngest, smallest VP who had done everything and anything to change Oracle to what it is right now. He didn't stop at the time. Typical of the Silicon Valley American brain to drive change into the world, right? So he had the urge in his mind that I need to do something to change the world, okay? So he didn't find an answer. Just like Steve Jobs or even Mark Zuckerberg, somebody told him to come to India. He took a sabbatical for three months came down, came into a place called as uh, um, Kerala. I don't know if, if somebody is a Malayali here, maybe raise their hand so it makes it easier for them. Oh yeah. So, um, Koylan, you've heard about it, Kollam, right? And people in um, Kerala know Mata Amrita Nandamai, right? Called as the hugging saint, right? So, that lady, apparently he, he bumped into because his mentor, his advisor, took him there. So as, as any other person uh, who gets the time to interact with, everybody gets two seconds to talk with that lady. So he said, look, what do I want to do in this world? She said two things. You want to change the world, right? Do something to change the world. Do something, what you're doing, plus engage people so that they get help from you. And the second thing is be nice to people. So if you look at it, your community here, Salesforce community, right? Prior to the Salesforce community, did you know each other at all? No, correct? So without knowing anybody, you have come into a community, trying to understand each other, trying to participate here, and all you guys have been pretty nice into the system, correct? So whole concept is you have changed the way the dynamics of IT used to be called, isn't it? Right? How many of you have gone to Dreamforce events? No? One? Okay. How do you, how do you find it? Why? Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Social. Social interaction. What lounges do you go? Everywhere. I've been for four years. All right. Okay. And and the world tour as well. So. Exactly. So the best part of it is you get to see a lot of people. Exactly. Right? Different cultures. So the whole concept of changing the world is completely adopted in having you as part of Salesforce journey. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So that's the underlying thing to it. So I'm going to stop there, all right? Now let's go to, because I have 15, 20 minutes. I don't want to take more time. Happy to take more questions offline, no problem, all right? So let's come to education.
right? Now, just a day back, I was reading an article which talks about two countries. One is in Africa. Adoption of technology has increased the power of young grains coming into the ecosystem by 38% in that country. I don't want to name that country. Okay? Similarly, a country in, in Asia is contributing around 28% of the innovators or startup minds in the world. They have adopted technology and 20 to 30 year uh, age range, you get the best innovators because the adoption of technology into their growth is something which they have learned and then go about it. Salesforce has had HEDA. I'm sure most of you would have learned or know what is HEDA. Earlier it used to be higher education, right? Now it's rebranded as education cloud, right? Now the thing is, what all can be done in education cloud, correct? All of us have graduated, all of us have come through the drains of, in fact, trust me, I don't have my engineering degree um, convocation picture. I don't have it. Because the day I finished my engineering, I flew off. I didn't get the chance. Now, after I came back after 20 years, I went and collected my degree certificate. I'm sure all of you would have gone through the pains of going through getting your marks card, getting your standing in front of your bosses or teachers. Sir, please give me my books, please give me this, please give me that. Everybody has experienced it out, right? Isn't it? A seamless structure, how you can better that out if you think through. Say, for example, all, I mean, some of us are married or whatever, or kids, and they're going. You don't go to the school, you look at the app and say, hey, look, your, your scores haven't come. Why is it that it's not come? You blame the teacher. You blame the technology. Apps don't work, right? Hangs. Real practical problems, right? Practical problems. How does education cloud help? And for this, you don't need to publish one mobile app on Play Store, one mobile app on iStore. No, no. Everything is there. So what is the differentiator what Salesforce can bring as far as their education cloud is? Can someone help me with it? What are the arms in the education? If we, all of us have done that, right? All of us have done that. I will do it. So we did, I did one of the implementations on HERA for Stanford. So uh, we had the registration process, yeah. which was seamless. Yeah. We, had, uh, we had leveraged the Salesforce backend, of course. Everything is on Salesforce. And uh, we did a lot of, um, also it, it was integrated with Experience Cloud. Um, what I can think of is uh, we had the uh, programs there, and those programs were linked to the rooms, which room you can uh, go and then attend the programs. Yeah. And the programs were uh, linked to the Marketing Cloud as well. So people can register through the Marketing Cloud. We would send the... Uh, uh, invitations and everything. So HEDA is connected to uh, the Salesforce, basic sales and service cloud, marketing cloud, and also the experience cloud. It was seamless, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, thank you. I didn't get your name. Ram. Ram Priya. Ram? Ram Priya. Ram Priya. All right, yeah. So you must be a Tamilian person, right? Okay. So, um, <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, some of the points, yes. Okay, I'll give you a classic case. Uh, this is with IIT Madras. How many of you have gone through IIT Madras? Any idea? No? Has anybody gone in IIT Madras? Did, did engineering or BTEC, BS, no? Okay. So um, the alumni of IIT Madras um, had to come on for the 75th Okay, alumni meet or IIT Madras uh, um, 75th anniversary. Placement team never had 
a clue about how to get 36,000 alumni fast order fired in the box. Either their LinkedIn's were not updated, they didn't know what to go about it, they had no clue. Okay, and they just had three months time to bring at least around 28 to 30,000 people because the, the whole event was inaugurated and chaired by a beloved Prime Minister Modi, okay? How did IIT Madras come in for this? They reached out to multiple companies. They narrowed down on Salesforce. They said, look, Pardot is something which will help do an outreach. And through Salesforce implementation, you know the success rate of reaching to the alumni network? From hardly 8%, it went to 97%. That's the technology adoption. What does this mean of bringing in that 97%? Means more revenue for IIT, more exposure for the students with the alumni, experience of, not just the experience cloud, of people who are using Salesforce, right? And their day-to-day -day experiences, how they can contribute back to alumni in the organizations where they're working, you don't need a placement team at all, correct? Right, that's the power of technology adoption in the whole ecosystem. You touched upon experience cloud, you touched upon room, I have touched upon um, um, the alumni network. Go to ISB, right? Salesforce did a fantastic job in India on the ISB alumni network, okay? Similarly, IASC is adopting alumni where they're talking about grants to be delivered for projects. I know of some companies in Bangalore where they help these students who want to go to IIT, okay, economically they might be challenged. There are donors in the US and the Silicon Valley who want to bring in and put money to make them better. So the entire platform is being supported there. How does that happen? All through alumni. Where does this trickle down to? Education cloud coming in, right? We are talking about, how many of you heard about national education policy, which is coming up? All of us? Yeah? Right? Multiple course offerings. If I can bring in an automated system of bringing in Pick and choose courses, price to that. Your commerce cloud can be stitched into it, right? Your marketing cloud can be stitched into it. Your mobile publisher can be stitched into it. Absolute student life cycle, right? Parents management, fee management, payments, of course, sales, service, experience, everything. Service cloud, you are going to bring in a university 360. They're going to do that, right? Half of them in education cloud is there. The rest half is all up to us to bring that to a system where we make this successful. Is that easy to digest? How do I onboard a faculty? You do reference checks for onboarding a faculty, right? I want to automate that system. I want to automate the entire admission process. I want to automate course pickup. If I can bring in these capabilities into the education cloud, I think we all can make this a success for Salesforce to be sold to the universities in the country. That can be your showcase as a proud moment for all of you guys. Look at it, think through this. Okay, happy to guide you guys wherever required, relevant, and then at a point of time, if you want to talk to it, I'm happy to engage with long discussions because I myself would have implemented around 27 universities end-to-end -end solutions. Okay, I also sit on board for a couple of universities as a course curriculum advisor, especially on the computer science coming into India. Yeah, all right. So that is one thing. Okay, I think I'm done with the education part of it. Sorry guys, I don't have much time. Well, uh, I, I mean, <laughs> Commerce Cloud team took probably around Two hours, right? I'm not going to bore you also. Um, the other important thing is 
touching on the health cloud. You have heard about it? Yes. Most effective time of health was when COVID hit all of us, right? That is the most effective time, I would say. People are happy that you go and work from home. It's all happy. You, 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 everybody becomes health conscious. Yoga became a big thing. Diet became a big thing, right? Everybody wants to eat millets. Nobody wants to touch rice. Hmm? So how, how do you think health cloud can do better? We all talk about many, I mean, most of us would have gone through the hospital life cycle, right? It's tedious, man. Really tedious. That too, if you have insurance, oh, you're doomed. You're totally doomed. And as a common man, as an employee working with a multinational company, my insurer will take care of everything. I don't need to do anything. Everything is fine. My company will take care of my child. Call him. He'll do it. End of the day, to get medicines, how much struggle people would have gone through, right? How much of pain people would have gone through in the last three years? Hospitals would have minted money big time. Don't quote me wrong. <laughs> Right? So, um, where, where does the health cloud fit into the system? If you look at it from India perspective, right? I don't know whether you've heard about this the way national education policy. You might have heard election time ads coming up. Oh, we have rolled out ABHA cards for Indian citizens. What does ABHA mean? Aishman Bharat Health Account. This the way you have your Aadhaar card. Every health card is attached with the Aadhaar. What is, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. What is, what is so beautiful about it? You go, flash your Abha card, all your reports are available on the system. Where you went, what is your blood stats, what samples have you given, who is the doctor, what medicines was done, Right? All of the data is in ABHA. Correct? It's an open sandbox given for people who want to integrate with their telecom, I mean, sorry, not telecom, health systems. Right? EMRs, whatever you call it. Patient management systems. Health Cloud just talks about this patient management, service cloud, ticket management, how am I going to do this, care plans, and all of that part. Nobody has thought through integrating, getting data on the stats, vital stats of each patient which comes in. So when I walk into the OPD, right, by default, whether you like it or not, you are going to be check your height, weight, blood pressure, sugar, and he'll run, ask you to run through some similar tests. Even if you show him the previous reports, he'll say, no, we can't rely on this. We can't rely on it. Exactly. Even if it's 24 hours, right? Exactly. So <laughs> it's again a revenue stream, right? So ABHA is trying to eliminate that. ABHA is trying to eliminate that. The other best advantage is with that data, doctors are liable. Doctors will be completely bound by legal way of how they handle patients, right? So this is something which Salesforce, I know for sure, they have started working on it, where they're going to talk and tie up. I have not seen any partner who has a tie up with uh, the ABHA network. Um, apart from that, the other most important thing, we all have, I mean, India, thankfully, or whatever you call it, we have become number one in the population, correct? Isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> right? So now, what does it mean? You get more number of doctors. Quality doctors, I mean. You, you get to one colony, you'll get 100 doctors. Right? So quality doctors, I mean, all of them are liable. If, if they don't treat patients properly, they're going to be completely accountable. It's, it's going to go to that level. It will become a medical legal case if I don't do it properly. Now you see strange things that, okay, um, 
um, the patient dies, everybody in the family starts punching, pouncing, then there's a media coming in showing all that, this happened, that happened, doctor, registration, cancellation, all of that will happen, right? Now, completely legalize the whole network system. That is where Salesforce can come in, Health Cloud can give you a better impact. We have three years to make that happen for India as far as the Indian Medical Council adoption of this. Now, the reason why I said we bring in more doctors is a couple of things. One is more doctors means they have the ability, I mean, how many of you do literally um, look at research? Um, working is fine. You guys get into cubes, get into work environments. Do you do some research at all? Do you do some growth in personal professional life? Do you do some research? Do, do you publish papers at all? No? Don't tell that my bosses don't allow me to get out. Do you guys do some research, publish some papers, connect back with the universities, be with your bosses at university? No? No? That's something which is different here in India, right? Yeah? So doctors, they are very efficient here. I'll give you a very simple case. How many of you have heard about the black fungus three years back or two years back, right? People who have heard about it, can you raise their hands? I would like to get the count. Okay, yeah. That's a decent number. Maybe around 30% know what it is, right? Yeah, at least in this. Now, if you look at CDC, right? That's the benchmark in the US, right? Anthony Fauci, I don't know if you've heard him or not, uh, right? So that guy is heading that. So the CDC is the benchmark of the data being released and that data is being consumed by the pharma companies and the insurance companies to hit the patients, end of the day, right? So they take these guidelines and put the pharma guys and say, hey, look, you build the medicines, you build this, and on that pharma, you go into the insurance sector. Now, in India, in India, we had around 18,000 people infected with MUCA or black fungus, what do you call it? I don't know, media said that we didn't have medicines. We didn't have medicines. Medicines came after two months. By the time, many of them would have gone dead. Because the once you are hit by the black fungus, the lifespan is only seven days. Okay? Just seven days, you're dead. So data is not available on how many people got infected. It took India two years to publish that data. And because they didn't have the validated data coming out, that 18,000, how many treated, what level, what expertise, where, how, which doctor, all of those parameters will help the doctors to get the relevant data for them to publish. And then it can get an approval because Health Cloud is in the HIPAA compliance. Similarly, India is bringing in Deeksha as a compliance platform. Okay, so that compliance platform will help the doctors to publish research papers because India produces the largest doctors, right? And our output to the global economy in terms of research is only 2%. That's disheartening. So this is where Health Cloud can help the doctors take the data, put the data actually properly with the systems in place. The, de the decision support systems through Tableau or even Einstein Analytics can help them to carve out reports on the fly research data to come up and make it very successful for them and they can publish, see for if the data is available to publish a paper it won't take more than 30 minutes, right? Isn't it? We don't have the data. That's where the health cloud can bring in a lot of value systems to help grow the doctor's community and there are multiple things can be done. You may want to link it to your EMRs, you may want to link it to your medical devices. I see a lot of medical device manufacturing companies, example is Abbott. Oh man, uh, their stock levels are crazy. One stand, pack of one stand, one variant is around 10 CR. 
shelf life is six months. They don't have a track. Their, their usage is only 30%, 70% is, is loss. Even with that 70%, they're making profit, right? So if we can produce all that data, tied up with pharma, tied up with insurance cloud, tied up with your um, health cloud, service, yes, right? All this can help give a better, not just hospital 360, it's a human 360, I would say, to make things better. Am I making sense or is it too boring? Sorry? Okay, okay. So I think I'm done because I, have, I, I still have half a uh, water bottle. <laughs> so I leave, leave it to... So uh, any questions, happy to take it. Offline, I'm okay. Um, yeah. Arsha, come on the mic. Here, here. Yeah, thanks for sharing all this data. Definitely we didn't have this insights and numbers which you said. We have India produces a maximum number of doctors, but globally, but uh, it is just only that we accommodate only 2% of the research. Uh, why, why do you think it is, just, just for information purpose, is it just because of lack of resources or it's a lack of interest or is it because we are traditionally not trained to do that? Um, well, um, can I be sarcastic and candid here? Oh, candid also, please, okay. please. Right. <laughs> How much? I'm sorry. You can manage both. <laughs> okay, so dedication of doctors is very important. Now what happens in the trade-off is, once you start becoming a dedicated doctor, I don't know, in Tamil there was a movie where they say 10 rupee doctor who does treating and all of that, right? No? I think it's a movie from Vijay, if I'm right, isn't it? No? So he says I'm a 10 rupee doctor. So his focus is 10 rupee. But then when it comes to the commercial space here, you have a lot of MBA guys running the hospital. Okay, you buy an equipment. Impetus is on the doctor, not on the MBA guy. So the MBA guy pounces on you and tells you that, dude, for me, you have to get the revenue of 50 lakhs. He becomes a sales guy than a medical guy, right? So the focus is more on generating revenue. Forget the patient. End of the day, he'll say, sorry, I, I did my best thing. The patient didn't respond, period, over, right? So this can be accountable, one thing. The second thing is, in terms of, as a traditional approach, you guys are super smart. You guys have adopted technology very well. My father, my grandfather, for him, one syringe, run it in the same Dettol Dabba, hot water, push it. Correct, no? When I used to be uh, going to a doctor for a small, uh, even cough cold, there used to be one small mixer. Even today, I recollect. Today, I have a um, wedding at home uh, with um, all my cousins come down. We were all talking about it. Dude, when we fell sick, we used to go to one doctor, a small silver tumbler, a small silver tumbler with one pink color syrup. That's it. That's it. Huh. The, we used to call it as the Alba mixture, right? <laughs> Don't ask me how that word came. We used to call it as the Alba mixture, right? Drink it, you're done. That's about it. And you have, you have a very good doctor, he'll give you a shot and then you're done. That's about it. You're, you're, you don't worry about it. But now, technology is aiding so much, you are able to get the data for you. Now, the doctor has to be conscious. You need to make him more tech savvy. Now, I'm sure with a lot of doctors whom I interact with, uh, because I sit on a couple of advisory for doctors and healthcare and all of that, I see a lot of people at probably 50s, right? I've seen a doctor who is like 55, okay? He does around 14 robotic surgeries a day. He does 14 robotic. He, he says 78% of Indian men end up getting prostate cancer by the age of 60. How is he able to get the data? Because he has invested time and technology to learn the technology and then get the data out of technology. So that transition is slowly happening and we as IT guys can help enable that that's where we bring in the Salesforce community into force. Okay, if you have the product, then your Salesforce AEs will come and hug you and then do what not, right? <laughs> so that's where we need to enable it out. 
am I answering the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. But one I, uh, follow up question I had was I'm sorry for taking, uh, sorry for everyone. Um, but <laughs> yeah, um, that's a sarcastic point. I understand. Uh, the next one is uh, you, you mentioned uh, revenues, does MBAs are sitting on top of this. This is global problem. It's not just specific to India. See, when I addressed it, right, when, when we had the discussion, we started with India, where we have a global uh, highest number of doctors produced, but uh, the research is only 2%. This, this is actually speaking, the revenue model, we, we took it from the Western world, okay? Hospitals, uh, the Correct. corporatizations, Correct. healthcare Correct. Co Correct. corporatizations and Correct. all stuff. Correct. So whenever you say that, I mean, how are they able to do it? Is it just because of technologies or it's a mindset? No. Enforcement of the policies, enforcement of the legal aspect to it, okay? That's the way to it. Go to US. My, my brother-in-law is an oncology specialist, okay? He's a top-notch, senior most uh, oncologist in the US, okay? He, he hardly sees 10 patients a day. Mm. He hardly sees 10 patients. One is the volume of people. That's what I said, probably you are number one, right? And the amount of people coming in, the time to service, how many of us have time to literally go through record by record, record by record, write everything? No. Go to this shop, A, hey, take this, sometimes the pharmacy, pharmacy guy itself will suggest, boss, take this, this will be fine, don't go to the doctor. But time is not there for them. Oh. Time is not there. Plus the passion to learn and do it, he wants to do that academic and all of that. And all. So that infusion has to come in. Now it's coming in pretty strong, I would say. Because they're seeing the benefits. Yeah. They're really seeing the benefits. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the importance of uh, human lives in India has grown up. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's growing up, I exactly. think. Exactly. And the compliances, and it yeah, is yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it and was not there in place earlier. Absolutely. And with this policy being enforced, yeah. I am sure everybody will toe the line. Yeah, uh, and I yeah. think uh, that was the question answer yeah. I was expecting. Yeah. That was yeah. very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, but sir, in the interest of time, can actually people are not done, sir. <laughs> That's the thing. But still, yeah. Okay, sir. So thank you so much, everyone. And we'll take only one question from team, sir. I got a question. Yeah, actually, thank you. See, uh, people, Bharat will be available, you can follow him. He's a man of uh, standing encyclopedia, you could say. That to a Salesforce dictionary. Whatever the cloud you want in Salesforce, is good at it. Please ping him, please disturb him in LinkedIn. That's, he's absolutely a good person. He will respond to every single person in very short span. I really experienced it. So with that, we are going to close this education guest talk on health and education cloud. Thank you so much, Bharat sir. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now, people, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Can I have his on screen? Thank you so much, everyone. I think you enjoyed this and learned a lot about education and health cloud now. Now, we are going to have, as I mentioned earlier, this is the first session Cloud Odyssey is organizing in. We started with April. For the entire financial year, we are going to have webinars, meetups, and even podcasts. We are planning it. So, now, we are having one webinar calendar release. What are the webinars we are going to do from this April to next 2024 March? For that, I request our Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Prashant, to come on to the dais and release Cloud Odyssey webinar calendar. I sir. Give him a big round of applause. And uh, I request the practice leads, Mr. Raj Shekhar, Commerce Cloud, and uh, Raghu Prasad, the Salesforce Corps, to assist him in releasing the webinar calendar. Please give them a big round of applause. Yeah. Sir, sir, you can come here. Just you can take out the screen now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can take it out now. Just take out the screen. Okay, okay. You can go there. <laughs> just, 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 just a second. I'll take it. You can do it now. You can take it out. Right? Yes, come on, we will.
Thank you, thank you so much. Now I request our CTO Prashant to address the audience. Yeah, quickly. <laughs> Can you hear the back? All of you? All of you? All of you? My voice is more than you guys. All right, you know what? Look at those things. Um, I would really, really appreciate all of you take a note of it and then I really want you all to be a part of this. So that's my first thing. And uh, thank you for uh, being very, I would say, assertive as well as, um, you know, interactive in this. Some of you has dozed off, but then that's fine. That's, that's how the life is. Um, but those who have really, really interacted, and I'm sure this would have made a few impact on how you look at certain problems. Um, let me ask you a quick question before I kind of, you know, uh, starting I would say, uh, before I start thanking everyone. So um, some of you might have traveled in um, Metro today. Can I see those hands raised? OK. Some of you have traveled in taxis. Some of you have traveled by bike. OK. So the reason I asked you that is this. Um, wherever you're traveling, right? And whatever mode you're taking, one is that you have reached a place where you have gained certain things. Isn't it? If you look at the dias over there who are working tirelessly to make sure that this is going live, there is an improvement that they are seeing in what they are doing. And the way we do certain things, you know, you always need to improve what you have done from the previous thing. Let me correlate what I'm trying to say with, with what, you know, how the, may, the, the way you traveled to this uh, uh, event, actually. So we all know that there is a continuous improvement that happens. And then we all gain so much of information, either through the media, either through, well, you know, uh, many other means or events like this. You all need to, rather, we all need to implement that. So I have... I mean, no doubt that whatever events that have attended, whatever information that I take, whatever interaction that I do with different people, I learn. I as in, we all learn. But the only thing what we don't do is we will forget and then we will not implement that. So that has been a constant, I would say, in a complaint across the globe as well. Now, now again, trying to correlate with what you guys have done, how do you reach here, right? So much of information has you would have kind of given to the public, or in other words, to various other organizations when you traveled in different mode. Have you ever thought about it, how it would have happened? Somebody will be monitoring you. Probably a, a GPS is monitoring you. And the tickets that you, you know, buy in a metro, or the petrol stations that you go, and the tickets that you buy on the taxis. So all this information are being captured. Do you agree? All right. So, uh, I mean, if, if I can think of, with, with my gray hairs, I mean, you are so young, and imagine that, you know, where this data is going and how this is being used. And it is so fantastic to think of in a very, very positive way how this is being used. And that's exactly what you guys are working on, whatever the Salesforce or the SF cloud that you talk about. There are umpteen number of clouds, right? One of my close colleagues says this cloud, that cloud, so many clouds, actually. Now, the data which you're passing through, they, the data which is being captured in all these ways, so somebody is making use of it or putting it to a right use as well as wrong use as well. That's a different case. But then making use of those information, the data collection, making it as a, you know, a, a pretty informative things and then trying to address probably a, a sales cloud, a commerce cloud, and the health cloud, all of them together, if you have that information, and the information that you have got, probably received that today, try imagining that you know you, each one of you are trying to implement that in multiple ways. That's exactly what in Cloud Odyssey we do. So that's where I wanted to relate to this. Meaning there is a way to organizely doing or executing all these uh, 
technology and we are here to facilitate that at the same time and uh, also with a with a with an interactions like this we also wanted to have a bigger community and bigger space for us to share our knowledge and get your knowledge as well so that's one of the primary objective as well am i making sense so um two takeaways number one is whatever you get think about it and start implementing it okay don't put that on a garbage can actually the, the the second one is keep observing how you can improve the system with all these technologies in place whichever vertical that you are working and the, the reason i'm saying that is i come from a typical integration background where so many things whatever mr bharat has talked about and then and yugandhar has talked about talked about rajshekhar has talked about all of them are connected behind you know a specific the, the tenants he, he spoke about servers and many other technologies that he spoke about and i come from a typical background of integrating those things behind the scenes so i can see how it, i mean how how they are connected together so if you can start thinking in those times and then if you can make use of uh, such events and then get these experiences put in your places i'm sure you know you can have a best ecosystem built together to capture data to serve the human kind right so with that i really really want to talk uh, thank you all of you you know who are actively participating and then you know listening to this uh, um content and then the people who are here um who are making it uh, so live and made it so live rather so i really thank let's give a big round of applause to all of us all right so i think you know with that um probably we'll go to the next session yeah so i'll so, yeah i'll take it yeah thank you thank you so much prashant for that thanks a lot people uh, in live streaming and people who can't see that they are going to do webinars from april to 2024 march and that too they were on commerce cloud mule soft and sfdc multiple clouds like manufacturing cloud health cloud education cloud they are going to do it every month the updates if you want to know it just follow us on linkedin it will be enough and after that we do have a registration and you can join in we will do this sort of meetups and then a webinars even podcast also will try okay thank you so much with that we'll go to the next session. topic people uh for making this run as prashant said a lot of people involved in it and we have we been planning it from march even february onwards so we are planning we planned a small felicitation program just for the people who are a part of it to start with that i request our managing director mr govind rama choudhury to come on to the dais and address the audience for <laughs> sir Hi all, thank you uh, so much for your time during weekend. I'm a bad speaker. I don't know. I I don't speak publicly. I'm very much bad speaker. Please bear with me. Yeah. Cloud Odyssey. We started with bunch of technology savvies. We know only technology. My God. So we, we, our founders are from Salesforce and integrations and delivery backgrounds. so we united couple of uh, technology people and we know only technology nothing else so we started this company in 2014 in uk it's a uk headquarters company currently located in uh, uk us india and singapore and we are expanding our wings so i would like to know from your uh, from your side being uh, uh, here i can see lot of youngsters what you expect from your employer slash your company what basically you will expect be one best question <laughs> it's okay yeah yeah, yeah money uh, <laughs> definitely money will come uh, for the job that you are doing uh, <laughs> yeah definitely money will come with the work that we are doing apart from money i would like to understand technology and learning scope and uh, so your job should be challenging i know people how many so, uh, i know i know i know so many enthusiastic people they leave the companies just because they don't have anything to learn you might have seen those people so we know exactly what enthusiastic people 
can see from the organization, we are exactly providing that. So that is the reason for us, a secret for us to acquire, get more talents, young talents. Most of our company has a lot of young talents. So that is our secret to acquire, uh, get uh, more young talents. We provide a lot of uh, work that needs a uh, lot of creation and a lot of, uh, I can say, it needs a lot of, uh, I'm not getting correct words, but the <clears throat> I'm sorry, I told you, right? <laughs> I'm poor in communication. So uh, yeah, we are, we are able to grasp people attention and we, have, we, are expon we are expanding exponentially. So if you wanted to uh, join us, please join us. And if you, if you wanted to collaborate with CloudODC in any way, you can go to our website, cloudodc.co, where you can find one chart bot. You can give your details and we'll, we'll get back to you. So if you wanted to join us in any way, uh, you can uh, directly ping us through uh, that channel. We are happy to collaborate with you. CloudODC.co, that is our website. You can find a chart bot over there. So you can submit any query there. We'll get, uh, if, it is, uh, if you wanted to join us as, a, as an associate, uh, our HR team will get back to you. If you have any some business proposal, our sales team, sales team will get back to you. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, efforts to come here all the way from different locations from, of Bangalore. Thank you so much. Oh. I request Mr. Chaudhary to stay on dais for some more time. We'll do the felicitation. First of all, people, uh, for making this done, even there is a person, I've been poking him, I've been disturbing him from January onwards. It's, he is one of the person for all of us to be here and under a name called Salesforce Bangalore Developer Community. It's none other than our Kishore. <laughs> I request Kishore to come on to the dais. Ambika, we have a small presentation for you, Kishore. <laughs> yeah, please come to the maybe beginning. Go, go, go there. Give them a big round of applause. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much, Kishore, for your fantastic support. Without that, it couldn't be possible today. Thanks a lot. And people, as I mentioned, uh, thank you so much for that. And now, uh, Chaudhary sir, just a second. As people, I said, there will be some surprise gifts for the audience. Our volunteers are observing it on based on some conditions, as I said. Just, uh, we're going to do it. And before that, uh, if people are aware or not, I'm not sure, like we have conducted a quiz in online about this session. The people who registered in online, especially in the teams and uh, YouTube people, whoever are there, for you, whoever participate in that quiz, we have the quiz winners. You're going to get a gift hamper. Definitely, we're going to courier you. you. Please ping your address in the teams. We're going to courier you. I'm, we are assuring it. And I'm going to announce the quiz winners here. The quiz winners, the first person, actually, we have it here, Mr. Tarun. Tarun, wherever you are, please come on to the desk. Give him a big round of applause. Yeah, you can give it to Chaudhary. Thank you, thank you, Tarun. <laughs> Do I appreciate you. A small gift hamper for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And then we have two people, Mr. Srinivas Pasam. And then Ganesh B, if at all you are in online, we are going to send you the gift hampers for sure. You are, you are the winners. Thank you so much. Now, thanks a lot. Now, in person, uh, our volunteers have been observing. There are some mute spectators who sat in between you people and observed a couple of people. Uh, we are going to give some gift hampers to them as well. The first person is Mr. Umesh. Umesh, yes. Thank you so much, Umesh, for your active participation. Yeah. Then we have Kritika. Miss Kritika, that's, I totally understand you love to ask questions only. You don't like to come to stay. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Please come. Yes. Thank you, Kritika. Kritika. Oh, sorry. It's Kritika. 
they noted it down as Kritika Yar. Sorry. <laughs> and then we have the one more person, Mr. Gunashekar. Yes, please give him a big round of applause. And then we are having one fantastic nomination. We thought of the first attendee of this conference who will they wear this first tag. The person is none other than Suyesh Kumar. Yay! <laughs> Please. Thank you so much. And then uh, we're gonna felicitate the people in online as well, like who were quite interactive, asked some very good questions. Our people noted that from teams we have Ajay. Just give them a big round of applause. And then we have Matesh. And from YouTube we have Ganesh B. So people. Please ping your address in the chat. We're going to send those gift hampers to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. With this, thank you so much, Chaudhary, sir, for addressing that. You can hand. Thanks a lot. People, uh, can I have agenda? Thanks a lot, everyone. As I mentioned, in, we came to the last phase of our session, which is a word of thanks. Because as you've seen, multiple people, multiple departments involved in this for making this a huge success. So I request our CTO Prashant to address the audience for a vote of thanks. Wherever I am going, I am not leaving this topic on So, um, you know what? Let me put this in silence, please.